Good morning from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. And welcome to Mission Control as we begin our coverage today of U.S. Spacewalk 87. You are looking live inside the equipment lock of the Quest airlock of the International Space Station as two astronauts prepare to venture outside the Quest airlock a short time from now. On your screen you see on the left is NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and on the right is NASA astronaut Steve Bowen who will be today's spacewalkers. Bowen is wearing the spacesuit with the red stripes on it and Again, Bowen is on the right side of your screen and will be wearing that spacesuit with the red stripes and Hoberg is on the left and is wearing the unmarked suit today. Today's spacewalk is expected to last about seven hours, the focus of which will be on the starboard truss of the International Space Station to install and monitor the deployment of one of the IROSAs or ISS rollout solar arrays, which arrived on the SpaceX Cargo Dragon resupply craft on Monday to the International Space Station. Today's spacewalk is the 264th in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. This will be the ninth spacewalk for NASA astronaut Steve Bowen and the first spacewalk for NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. Today's spacewalk will be the seventh spacewalk in 2023 and the fifth spacewalk for Expedition 69 so far. What you're seeing on the screen here is the crew as they continue to step through procedures ahead of stepping out of the airlock a little later this morning. Right now they're completing in-suit light exercises. You can see them moving their legs and hands slightly. These movements help acclimate the crew's bodies to the lower pressure of the spacesuit and purge excess nitrogen from their blood slowly. This is required to avoid getting the bends or decompression sickness. Earlier this morning, the crew worked through procedures to pre-breathe 100% oxygen in order to purge that nitrogen from their body as well. Pause exercise, rest one minute. So again, today's spacewalk will see the crew members working to install the fifth IROSA to the International Space Station. This IROSA will be on the 1A power channel on the starboard truss of the International Space Station. And on June 15th, we'll have an additional spacewalk to install the array on the 1B power channel. These new arrays are 60 feet long by 20 feet wide and share a little more than half of the original arrays, which as you can see in this graphic here, they lie over top of them. Each new IROSA will produce more than 20 kilowatts of electricity, and once all... Resume exercise, cycle 10, this is the last cycle. And once all those IROSAs are installed, it will enable a 30% increase in power production over the station's current arrays. Continuing to get some good views of the crew on board the International Space Station as they step through those in-site, in-suit light exercise activities.
Station Houston on Space Ground 1, no action on that last caution. Ground zero. checking it out. Uh, session copy is no action on that uh, caution uh, message. And now coming into frame is NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, who has been helping the crew step through their procedures and get suited up this morning. Rubio is in the midst of a long duration space flight. By the time he lands this September, he will have spent the longest single time in space by an American astronaut, having accumulated 371 consecutive days aboard the International Space Station. Station Houston, space around one, just more words on that last enabled caution. It was dealing with an S-12 MDM, but no impacts to the EVA. Ground is still investigating. Okay, Johnny, we copy all. Thanks so much for the words. Understand, uh, no impact to EVA. Good to know. The crew is continuing to work through their in-suit light exercises. Airlock Houston Space Ground 1, that completes the 10 cycles of in-suit light exercise. You are go for step 5 in the EMU pre -breathe. And the crew has completed their cycles of those aisle exercises. The next steps for them will include continuing to step through procedures ahead of depressurization, part of which will include getting their SAFERS or simplified aid for EVA rescue installed on the back of their spacesuits. The SAFER is essentially a jet pack that could be used in the very unlikely situation that a crew member were to become untethered.
And we also have United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi floating in. And waiting on your go for step eight. Again, both Rubio and Alnayati helping to step through procedures with the crew as they continue preparations to exit the Quest airlock later this morning. Frank, step eight is in work. It's going to take about 10 minutes. You are go to proceed in step nine. We'll let you know when step eight is complete. I'm sorry, uh, step seven. We'll let you know when step we'll leave is on and proceed with step nine. And getting a good view of some of the tools that will be used during today's spacewalk, you did see the space drill or the pistol grip tool, which will be utilized quite heavily throughout today's spacewalk. You're also seeing some of the tethers float. Those will be utilized to ensure that the crew is attached to the International Space Station at all times. And Rubio is working to get those tools secured to NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg's spacesuit. And Rubio now moving over to get those tools in place on Steve Bowen's spacesuit. And he's being assisted by UAE or United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi. Al Nayadi's on the left of your screen, and Rubio's on the right.
as the crew continues to step through those procedures to get tools secured safely to their spacesuits. We do have a video that will be an overview of today's spacewalk where the duo will exit the sta station's Quest airlock to install an upgraded International Space Station rollout solar array on the 1A power channel on the starboard truss of the station. So let's learn a little bit more about what the crew will do during today's spacewalk. This video is for the ISIS rollout solar array or IROSA 1A install EVA. Steve Bowen, EV1 with the red stripes, egresses and receives a crew lock bag and puts it on his body restraint tether. EV2 with white stripes, Woody Hoberg, egresses with the crew lock bag on his body restraint tether and closes the thermal cover. EV1 translates up the forward face of the truss and goes starboard. He stops to configure safety tethers. EV2 follows a similar translation path and goes to the port crew equipment translation aid cart to temporarily stow his bag and retrieve an articulating portable foot restraint. Meanwhile, EV1 translates to the IROSA carrier, stows his bag, and retrieves his pistol grip tool. EV1 begins preparing IROSA for removal from the carrier, first releasing a restraint bolt on the upper IROSA. EV2 relocates the foot restraint and installs it on the space station's robotic arm. EV2 ingresses the foot restraint, and then the arm will move him away from the truss. EV1 translates to the lower IROSA and releases its first restraint bolt. He releases both anti-rotation devices back on the upper IROSA, and then will stow them in the crew lock bag. On the robotic arm, EV2 is flown over to access two sets of bolts on the boom end of the upper IROSA. The first two bolts will allow the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place to help with the array deployment later in the spacewalk. The second two bolts will release two of four mechanisms that hold the IROSA in its rolled up configuration. EV-1 partially releases the upper IROSA's restraint bolt and installs the first of two handling aids called scoops and prep for removing IROSA from the carrier. The arm flies EV-2 over to the hinge end of the upper IROSA and both crew members work to release the final bolt holding it to the carrier. EV-1 installs a second scoop and EV-2 lifts the IROSA off of the carrier. After several maneuvers on the robotic arm, EV-2 will arrive at the 1A Modkit worksite. During these maneuvers, EV-1 will pick up the temporarily stowed bag from the port cart and reconfigure both crew's safety tethers on his way to meet EV-2 at the Modkit. Both crew will then work to install IROSA onto the 1A mounting bracket. The crew will release the scoops, and EV-2 will move into position to release the final bolt holding IROSA in its folded position. Once released, EV-1 will hold IROSA closed while EV-2 egresses his foot restraint and gets into position. Both crew will then work together to unfold IROSA and secure the right side onto the mounting bracket. Once secured, EV-2 will drive two hinge bolts that hold IROSA in the unfolded position. EV-2 will then move away from IROSA to reconfigure a safety tether on the arm. EV-1 works to drive eight bolts to fully secure the IROSA to the mounting bracket. Both crew will then work to electrically connect the new IROSA to the ISS power system. They'll first attach four connectors to IROSA, then both will move to either side of the legacy array to disconnect the old array and connect a Y cable. This will allow power to flow from both the new IROSA and the legacy array to the space station power system.
At this point, EV-1 moves into a deployment viewing position, and EV-2 will release the final two bolts restraining Irosa in the undeployed position. Irosa will deploy over the next 6 to 10 minutes. During deployment, EV-1 translates back to the Irosa carrier to reconfigure the carrier beams that previously held the upper Irosa. These beams need to be rotated out of the way to allow access to the lower Irosa on the second EVA. Once deployment is complete, EV-2 will release two bolts that allow the Irosa blankets to become tensioned. EV-2 then cleans up the mod kit worksite, retrieving his Krulak bag, and heads to the carrier to help EV-1 with the carrier beams. The crew members will work together to release the bolts holding the beams in place. Then they will rotate the beams out of the way and secure them back down. This is the last task in the first DVA. Both crew will clean up the worksite and translate back to the airlock. They will clean up their tethers on the way. They will then work to ingress and begin repressing the airlock. This will finish the first of two EVAs. And that was an overview of what we can expect during today's spacewalk. On your screen here on the top right, you see NASA astronaut Frank Rubio continuing to step through procedures to get the crew ready to head out of the airlock later this morning. And towards the lower left of your screen, you see United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi. He's working alongside Rubio to prepare to get the simplified aid for EVA rescue or safer installed. Once the safers are installed on both Hoburg and Bowen, the crew will move through the airlock and start depressurization pr procedures. <laughs> Copy, Frank, 0009. Getting a good view inside the backside of the extravehicular mobility unit or EMU. Those are the spacesuits that the crew will be wearing during today's spacewalk. They're essentially a mini life support system and provide all of the environment protection, mobility, and communications for the crew members during spacewalks.
and as Rubio and Alneati continue to step through those procedures ahead of getting the crew ready to begin depressurization, we do have some statistics to go through today for our spacewalk. Today's spacewalk will be the ninth spacewalk for NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. He has a total spacewalking time of 54 hours and 19 minutes. And for NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, this will be his very first spacewalk. Today's spacewalk will be the 264th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades, and will be the seventh space station spacewalk this year. And this will be the fifth spacewalk for Expedition 69. To the station on one four step eleven time one two one four. And we copy Frank. And if you're just joining us this morning, we have two spacewalkers preparing to exit the International Space Station's Quest airlock to install a new ISS rollout solar array. Those spacewalkers are NASA astronaut Steve Bowen, who you see in the center of your screen there. And copy, Frank. Good numbers. And our other spacewalker today is NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who will be completing his very first spacewalk. Also in the equipment airlock is NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, as well as United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan al Nayadi. They're continuing to step through procedures with the crew ahead of getting them into the crew airlock for the depressurization sequence.
Back in the International Space Station flight control room, the Orbit 2 team is ready to support today's spacewalk under the direction of Flight Director Diane Daly. Station on one four, step 21, time 1218. Copy, Frank. In addition to Flight Director Diane Daly, the rest of the Orbit 2 team is supporting here from Mission Control Houston as well. To her right as the cap her right at the Capcom console is the ground IV, and that is Canadian Space Agency astronaut Jenny Gibbons. She'll serve as the spacewalk communicator who will talk directly with the crew during the spacewalk, helping them choreograph timelines and procedures. And to her right is NASA astronaut Nick Haig, who is the Capcom. You'll hear him communicating with the crew up until the point of depressurization this morning, at which point the ground IV will take over communi communicating with our spacewalking duo. Everything continuing to go smoothly this morning. The next major milestone that we can look ahead to is the installation of the Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue, or SAFERS, essentially the, the space jet pack. This is installed as a precautionary measure in the very unlikely event that a crew member were to become untethered from the International Space Station. This jet pack would allow them to get back to the space station. Following safer installation, we can look ahead to depressurization. First, the crew will move to the crew lock section of the Quest airlock, and depressurization will occur in a two-stage fashion. First, the crew lock will be taken down to five pounds per square inch of pressure. At this point, they'll pause depressurization to do a systems check, and then... Transition Houston on one.
and we are seeing Alneati and Rubio work together to install the safer. Hey, Frank. I've got one go back for you. Uh, step eight, uh, we owe you a go. Uh, your go to turn off the HECA. It's uh, just, if you want to turn off HECAs on both EVs, that'd be great. Thanks so much. Again, Alneati and Rubio now working together to install the safer simplified aid for EVA rescue on NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's spacesuit. And Rubio and Alneati working to get that safer installed on NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's spacesuit. For today's spacewalk, Bowen is designated EV-1. And he'll be wearing the spacesuit with the red stripes, which you can see on your screen there. Woody Hoberg will be designated EV-2 and will be wearing an unmarked spacesuit.
once both SAFERS are installed. The next milestone that we can look ahead to is depressurization and ultimately when the crew will then exit the International Space Station's Quest airlock. They'll then work together to install an upgraded International Space Station rollout solar array on the 1A power channel on the starboard truss of the International Space Station. The iroses were delivered on a SpaceX Dragon cargo resupply craft on Monday to the space station. Rubio and Alneati continuing to get the safer, simplified aid for EVA rescue installed on NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's spacesuit. Following installation of the safer, Bowen will be moved to the crew airlock for depress. and Bowen now being moved into the crew airlock. Next up, Rubio and Alneati will work together to get Hoberg's safer installed.
and Rubio and Al Nayadi now going to work together to get the safer installed on Hoberg's spacesuit. Again, he'll be designated EV2 and he's wearing the spacesuit with the unmarked spacesuit this morning. As Rubio and El Nayadi continue to step through those procedures to get the safer installed, we can take a quick look ahead at what's to come. Following getting the safer installed, both crew will be moved into the airlock to begin the depressurization process. The, de the depressurization of the airlock is done in a two-stage process. First, the crew lock will be taken down to five pounds per square inch of pressure. At this point, depressurization will be paused to do a systems check. Following this, depressurization will resume and continue all the way down to vacuum. Now, once vacuum is reached, the two spacewalk space walkers will complete suit and communication checks before placing their spacesuit on internal battery power, which will officially mark the start of today's spacewalk. A U.S. spacewalk start and end time is measured from the time the crew places their spacesuit on internal battery power all the way up until the time repressurization occurs, and they're back inside the crew lock following completion of their spacewalk. We are expecting today's spacewalk to last about seven hours. And here in Mission Control Houston, NASA Flight Director Diane Daly did just pull the team of flight controllers on console, and everything is looking good. We are go for today's spacewalk.
Rubio now going to work to get Bowen moved into the crew airlock. Hoberg, rather. Uh, Bowen currently is in the uh, crew airlock already. Both Bowen and Hoberg now in the crew airlock. Once they get situated and everything looks good, we will see the hatch close and the depressurization process begin. And station Houston, uh, when able, on one. Connect with you on one. Hey Frank, uh, just uh, we're trying to get in front of an LOS uh, with some ground commanding. There's a couple steps that you're going to confirm later on. We'd like to do early. That's step 76 and 77. And that was the voice of... 76 and 77 are in good config. Emer MPEV is closed and... Uh, no one VAP is connected to the gamma cap. Copy, Frank. Thanks for doing this.
And that was the voice of today's Capcom um, and NASA astronaut Nick Haig calling up to Rubio, letting him know that there is a loss of signal coming up, giving them the go to step through a couple of procedures during that LOS. And station Houston on one, no action for you. You can acknowledge with the thumbs up. We're going to command so you go hot mic for the EV crew. And station Houston, uh, we're with you on one. Uh, if you try to transmit last, I want to let you know the crew is going to go hot mic here shortly. And also you've got to go in step 84. Okay, next copy. Uh, crew will be hot mic and go on step 84. And next, just be advised you're coming in a little bit weak. You're readable. Copy all. you know we're two minutes out for a 12-minute LOS and you are prime IV and your go to press. And I, I copy prime IV and go to press. Thanks so much. And we did just hear that confirmation from the ground that the crew is go to continue depressurization. First up, they'll close the hatch, which Alnayadi and Rubio are working together to do, as you can see on your screen. And you did see that hatch just get closed. We are in an expected handover between ground stations. 
So we are not going to expect to have video of the crew on board the International Space Station for the next 11 and a half minutes. However, we do know that they're going to continue the depressurization process as they have the go from the ground to do so. And if you're just joining us this morning, we have two spacewalkers who are suited up and in the process of working through depressurization procedures. Today they will exit the station's Quest airlock to install an upgraded IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array on the 1A power channel on the starboard truss of the International Space Station. We do have an animation to walk us through what we can expect our spacewalkers to complete today. So let's take a quick look. This video is for the ISIS Rollout Solar Ray, or IROSA, 1A install EVA. Steve Bowen, EV1 with the red stripes, egresses and returns. EV2 with white stripes, Woody Hoberg, egresses with the Krulak bag on his body restraint tether and closes the thermal cover. EV1 translates up the forward face of the truss and goes starboard. He stops to configure safety tethers. EV2 follows a similar translation path and goes to the port crew equipment translation aid cart to temporarily stow his bag and retrieve an articulating portable foot restraint. Meanwhile, EV1 translates to the IROSA carrier, stows his bag, and retrieves his pistol grip tool. EV1 begins preparing IROSA for removal from the carrier, first releasing a restraint bolt on the upper IROSA. EV2 relocates the foot restraint and installs it on the space station's robotic arm. EV2 ingresses the foot restraint and then the arm will move him away from the truss. EV1 translates to the lower IROSA and releases its first restraint bolt. He releases both anti-rotation devices back on the upper IROSA and then will stow them in the crew lock bag. On the robotic arm, EV2 is flown over to access two sets of bolts on the boom end of the upper IROSA. The first two bolts will allow the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place to help with the array deployment later in the spacewalk. The second two bolts will release two of four mechanisms that hold the IROSA in its rolled up configuration. EV-1 partially releases the upper IROSA's restraint bolt and installs the first of two handling aids called scoops and prep for removing IROSA from the carrier. The arm flies EV-2 over to the hinge end of the upper IROSA and both crew members work to release the final bolt holding it to the carrier. EV-1 installs a second scoop and EV-2 lifts the IROSA off of the carrier. After several maneuvers on the robotic arm, EV-2 will arrive at the 1A Modkit worksite. During these maneuvers, EV-1 will pick up the temporarily stowed bag from the port cart and reconfigure both crew's safety tethers on his way to meet EV-2 at the Modkit. Both crew will then work to install IROSA onto the 1A mounting bracket. The crew will release the scoops, and EV-2 will move into position to release the final bolt holding IROSA in its folded position. Once released, EV-1 will hold IROSA closed while EV-2 egresses his foot restraint and gets into position. Both crew will then work together to unfold IROSA and secure the right side onto the mounting bracket. Once secured, 
EV2 will drive two hinge bolts that hold Iroza in the unfolded position. EV2 will then move away from Iroza to reconfigure a safety tether on the arm. EV1 works to drive eight bolts to fully secure the Iroza to the mounting bracket. Both crew will then work to electrically connect the new Iroza to the ISS power system. They'll first attach four connectors to Iroza, then both will move to either side of the legacy array to disconnect the old array and connect a Y cable. This will allow power to flow from both the new Iroza and the legacy array to the space station power system. At this point, EV-1 moves into a deployment viewing position and EV-2 will release the final two bolts restraining Iroza in the undeployed position. Iroza will deploy over the next six to 10 minutes. During deployment, EV-1 translates back to the Iroza carrier to reconfigure the carrier beams that previously held the upper Iroza. These beams need to be rotated out of the way to allow access to the lower Iroza on the second EVA. Once deployment is complete, EV-2 will release two bolts that allow the Iroza blankets to become tensioned. EV-2 then cleans up the mod kit worksite, retrieving his crew lock bag, and heads to the carrier to help EV-1 with the carrier beams. The crew members will work together to release the bolts holding the beams in place. Then they will rotate the beams out of the way and secure them back down. This is the last task in the first DVA. Both crew will clean up the worksite and translate back to the airlock. They will clean up their tethers on the way. They will then work to ingress and begin repressing the airlock. This will finish the first of two EVAs. And that is a high level, level overview of what we can expect from today's spacewalk. If you're just joining us, two NASA astronauts are currently suited up and in the crew airlock and are working their way through depressurization procedures. Today's spacewalk, spacewalkers are NASA astronaut Steve Bowen, and today will be his ninth spacewalk, as well as NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who will be completing his first spacewalk. Bowen and Hoberg will venture outside for a spacewalk expected to last about seven hours today, the focus of which will be on the starboard truss of the International Space Station to install and monitor the deployment of one of the IROSAs, or ISS Rollout Solar Array, both of which were delivered on a SpaceX Cargo Dragon resupply vehicle on Monday to the space station. And today's spacewalk is the 264th in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. This is the seventh spacewalk in 2023 and the fifth spacewalk for Expedition 69. As we mentioned, it's the ninth spacework, spacewalk for Bowen, who has a cumulative spacewalking time of over 54 hours across eight previous spacewalks. The IROSA that the crew will install today is 60 feet long and 20 feet wide. It shades a little more than half of the original or legacy arrays, which are 112 feet long by 39 feet wide. Each new IROSA produces more than 20 kilowatts of electricity, and once all the IROSAs are installed, it will enable a 30% increase in power production over the International Space Station's current arrays.
and we are in a loss of signal period as we have a handover between satellites. However, we are expecting communications and video to be back here in less than a minute. During this loss of signal period, the crew has been stepping through procedures in order to work through depressurization of the airlock. This is done in a two-stage process. First, the crew lock goes down to five pounds per square inch of pressure, at which point that depressurization will be paused to do a systems check. And then following this, depressure depressurization will resume to bring it all the way down to the vac vacuum. Now once that vacuum is reached, the two spacewalkers will complete some additional suit and comm checks before placing their spacesuit on internal battery power, officially marking the start of today's spacewalk. and pressure inside of the crew lock is about 7.27 pounds per square inch. Again, we'll pause once that pressure reaches five pounds per square inch. Station Houston on one, we're back with you, voice only. Nick, uh, we have you live here, copy, voice only, thanks. And Stephen, what do you, you guys copy? You have about 100 millimeters of mercury to go. You want coffee? Yes, Frank, I copy. I see airlock P6.5. Yes, I agree. Pressure inside the crew lock now at 6.35 pounds per square inch of pressure. Now less than six pounds per square inch of pressure inside the crew lock. Again, once we do reach five pounds per square inch, that depressurization will be paused to do a systems check.
Everything's still looking good for depressurization now at 5.18 pounds per square inch of pressure inside the crew lock. Morty, the next action is going to be for you. We have about 10 to go. I copy, Frank, standing by. Woody, deep breath pump, man ISO valve closed. Both of you can expect an alert tone. Closed. And copy, closed. Okay, next thing we're going to do is a leak check. So you'll both take your switch display status until leak check question mark is displayed. Hold that for two seconds and then follow the displayed instructions. In order, QV1, QV2 in work. And pressure inside the crew lock is now at five pounds per square inch of pressure. So you did hear those words about the systems check that are occurring now. Following the systems check, depressurization will resume and continue all the way down to vacuum. And once vacuum is reached, the two spacewalkers will complete some additional suit and communication checks before they place their spacesuit on internal battery power, officially marking the start of today's spacewalk. And following this, the crew will, of course, exit the airlock and begin working to get that IROSA installed. Complete EV1, moving to EVA. That'll be a minute. Same for EV2. Copy, good. Be check for both. Good news. And then correct, you both want your O slash radars to EVA. So let me know when that's complete. EV2 is in EVA. EV1 is in EVA. The O2 actuator EVA for both. Woody and Steve, nice job. Woody, you're going to take the deep press pump man ISO valve to open. Both of you can expect an alert tone. Copy. Press pump man ISO valve is open. Okay, emergency MPEV is also open. Both of you continue to monitor your suit pressure gauge. Make sure that it remains less than 5.5. Again, if it ever goes above 5.5, let us know and we'll stop the deep press. If you want to go, give you two copies. Woody, the next action will be at 2 PSI. Copy, I see it. And those system checks looking good. Depressurization is continuing as expected. Pressure inside the crew lock now less than four pounds per square inch of pressure. Pressure inside the crew lock now approaching three pounds per square inch of pressure.
and we are getting a view back inside of the equipment lock here where NASA astronaut Frank Rubio on the left and United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi continue to step through depressurization procedures with Hoberg and Bowen who are inside the crew lock. Pressure inside the crew lock now at 2.68 pounds per square inch of pressure. Once vacuum is reached inside the crew lock, the two spacewalkers will complete additional suit and communication checks before they do place their spacesuit on internal battery power, which will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. A U.S. spacewalk start and end time is measured from the time the crew places their spacesuit on internal battery power. And we're at 123, continuing to 103. Copy, Frank. Now closing in on two pounds per square inch of pressure inside the International Space Station's crew lock. Okay, what do you want? 103, deep press pump, man, ISO valve, closed? Closed. I'll be closed. Woody on the UIA, switch deep press pump power off, OFF. Deep press pump power is off. Okay, guys, I will turn you over to Jenny for your initial tether config. And Jenny, you are prime. Copy, I'm prime, ready for the config. Sounds great. Jenny, I'm in a great, con uh, great position to read you the config starting at the airlock the ring extender. Go. All right. Airlock the ring extender, I have my left waist tether, gate closed, locked, black on black. The waist tether small hook is on my left ring extender, gate closed, locked, black on black. Also on my left ring extender, I have my red hook, gate closed, locked, black on black. My red reel and green reels are both unlocked. The red reel's yellow hook is Gate closed, lock, black on black to my green reel. My green reel's small green hook is gate closed, locked on my red reel. And the green reel's anchor hook goes to Steve's right waist tether. Okay, so and that anchor hook and Steve's waist tether large hook are both gate closed, locked, black on black. Steve, over to you if you can see it. Yep. So, we pick up with my waist tether, which is gate close side the lock, take hook that you uh, Take each other, red hook, gate close side the lock on my right D wing, extender. Yellow hook is gate closed, fire lock to the green rail. Both reels are unlocked. I have the uh, blank hook to my mini workstation. On my left hand side, I have I copy all. We are in a good config.
Thanks so much, James, and good morning to you and the Orbit 2 team. Good morning. We are happy to be here. Excited to work with all of you. And you are now hearing the voice of Jenny Gibbons, who is the ground IV. She'll be stepping through procedures with the crew during today's spacewalk. And that pressure inside the crew lock now at vacuum. Woody and Steve, we're continuing the deep press here. It'll take a couple of more minutes. Uh, when the crew lock DPDT is approximately zero, expect an alert tone. Zero copies. DPT copies. That pressure inside the crew lock is continuing to approach vacuum. It's now at 0.97 pounds per square inch. You guys, uh, caution, good luck out there. It's going to be fun to watch you guys do this. Frank, we're uh, depending on you. This is going to be good. You guys are going to work on this. It's going to work out really well. Frank, thanks so much. You guys did a fantastic job I being this morning. Thanks so much for everything. My pleasure. We'll see you in a few hours. Everything continuing to go smoothly this morning as NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen tracking around eight or nine more minutes down to 0.5 PSI. And Jay, that makes sense watching it go very slowly. <laughs> Sounds good. Again, everything going smoothly so far this morning as we anticipate the spacesuits to be switched over to battery power here shortly as soon as those comm checks and system checks are completed. Following this, the crew will egress or exit the, the hatch after they open the thermal cover. And we are continuing to get views inside the International Space Station. You are seeing NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, who helped get Bowen and Hoberg suited up and ready to go this morning. Paul Nayati now floating into screen as well. Bowen and Hoberg are inside the crew lock, which continues to depress. 
now at 0.64 pounds per square inch, rapidly approaching vacuum. The goal of today's spacewalk is to install an upgraded IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array on the 1A power channel on the starboard truss of the space station. Today's IROSA installation will be the fifth installed on the space station. Pressure inside the crew lock now at 0.55 pounds per square inch of pressure. And pressure inside the crew lock now at 0.5 pounds per square inch of pressure. Steve and Woody, we are at 0.5 PSI. You are go to verify the EV hatch gauge is less than 0.6 PSI and open the EV hatch. And I see the EV hatch at 0 decimal 4. Copy, 0 decimal 4, your go. And we are hearing that the hatch is open. Pressure inside the crew lock now, a vacuum. Both Hoberg and Bowen are now going to work together to egress or exit the airlock. Copy, Frank, emergency MPEV closed. Now we are in post depress. Woody and Steve, on your DCMs, switch power to bat, stagger your switch throws, and expect a warning tone. Easy one power. Power to battery. Copy. EB2, going to battery. Easy one, could be start blank, go bike. EB2, good restart, blank, no bite. Copy. We verified you have a functional display. Switch power 
EV1 and 2 to OFF, O-F-F on the UIA. All right, UIA, our EV1 and 2 both OFF. Copy. Check power EV1 and 2 LEDs. All four are off OSS. Four LEDs off. Copy off. Switch display to pro to verify functional display. Okay, we'll switch display functional. EV2 display functional. Copy two functional displays. You can disconnect your SCUs. Install your DCM covers and stow the SCUs in their pouches. Give you one and work. Give you two and work. All right, EB1, S, correction, EB2, E, S, U in the pouch. If I, you want to put in the pouch? Copy, EB1 and EB2, S, U's are in the pouches. On the check, depress pump, many 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 pump, All right, EV1, TCD, MacPot. Copy, EV1. EV2, TCD, MacPot. Copy, EV2. Switch water on. EV1, water on. EV2, water on. Check DCM blank byte off. And at 825 a.m. Central Time this morning, the 264th spacewalk in support of station assembly maintenance and upgrades has begun. Set your CCVs as desired. Report all subsequent changes to MCC. Okay, EV1, step two. Four. I need you two also at four. Copy both TCVs set to four. Report suit pressure gauge. EV1, four decimal two. EV2, four decimal four. Copy four decimal two and four decimal four. Set your visors as required. We have around 10 minutes till sunrise. One copy. Two copies. All right, with that, Steve, you can open the thermal cover. We'll have you stow the hook on the stiffener tether point, cinch the strap, and report Sharpie lines visible. All right, I'm get my tethers back to where they belong. They're bouncing around a bit. And we are expecting the thermal hatch cover to open momentarily. Okay, the hook is released. Connected and And we are seeing that thermal cover begin to open. Steve is preparing to egress. You can retrieve crew lock bag M. You'll be stowing this on your BRT and handing crew lock bag T out to Steve. All right, Johnny, sounds great. All right, I've got the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six lines visible. Copy, 
Deputy Steve, that's a good config. Egress the airlock. And we are seeing NASA astronaut Steve Bowen egress the airlock. He's designated EV-1 today, and he'll be wearing that spacesuit with the red stripe, so he's the first out of the airlock. Steve, no rush at all, but I've got crew out back to you when you're ready. Okay. Give me a second. Bowen is still inside the airlock. He'll egress here shortly, but first he's going to hand a crew lock, crew lock bag to Steve. My DRT ready? Sounds good. Egress, you can both turn on your HECAs and perform body checks. Happy Johnny, thanks. And next out of the airlock is going to be NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who is completing his very first spacewalk this morning. He'll be wearing the spacesuit with no stripes on it, the unmarked spacesuit, and his des designation is EV2. Once both crew members are out of the airlock, they'll work to translate to their next location, but first they're going to turn the lights on on their helmet cameras. Both crew members now out of the airlock. All right. I'm going to I'm going to plan to be aft, Steve. All right, I'm coming back around the other way then. Sounds great. I'm in a great spot for buddy checks if you want to do them here. Yeah, we'll just do them here. Okay, great. Thank you, Blake. Houston's ready to copy buddy checks. Confirm your hackers are on. And I see, what do you turn this way? I see. Green light, where's the other one? Uh, your TV is off. Is it? Okay. Goodbye. One. Two server handles down. And one right. tap up. Give 
putting my crew lock bag on. Yep. Yeah. We'll just... All right, Steve. Ready when you are. All right, let me see. One thing left to check. <laughs> oh, your lights are pretty bright. Um, your Indian TV still is not on yet. Okay, Jay, hit the button. Oh, there it is. I see yeah. it now. Okay. Okay. And uh, I see all safer handles down. I see two tabs up. And I see two green lights. And I see your lights are up. All right, Steve, for you, I see... <coughs> Two mini workstation tabs and a BRT tab, all three up. I see a green WVS light and a green HECA light. Your lights are on. Looking at tools and tethers. Put your bag on the BRT. And you're looking good, Steve. All right. I am. And I uh, looking to check your secret handles. One. Two, both down. Looking Thank good. You. <laughs> Starting off, my gloves look good, and I have a dry hat. And my gloves are good, and I have a dry hat as well. Houston copies, good buddy checks, good uh, glove checks, and dry hats for both of you. You can tend the thermal cover closed, and Steve, you'll be translating to the anchor hook location. I have more words for you when you're on your way. All right, give me one second. Cover closed. I'm going to be on my way. I got the cover, Steve. All right. Yeah. And Jenny, I'll have to uh, hold on fully closing the cover for my waist tether. Copy. Just tend to close for now. Thanks, Woody. Copy. And Bowen and Hoberg completed some initial checks to, to ensure everything is looking good on their suits. They're now going to get that thermal hatch cover closed. Steve, I have a caution for you. Avoid contact with the deployed test cable. Okay. I understand. Avoid contact with the test cable. Good read back for you both for around two minutes to sunrise. Uh, my own marker, by the way. You're looking for the FHRC, so F1 FHRC. Okay, well, I'm on my way. And Hoberg is getting the thermal cover closed. Meanwhile, Bowen is translating up the forward face of the truss. Steve, that mile marker is 6300. Once the thermal cover is closed, Hoberg is going to follow a similar translation path but he's going to stop at the port crew equipment translation aid cart and he's going to pick up an articulating portable foot restraint. This is going to be required for him later in the spacewalk when he steps into it on the Canada Arm 2. This is where you'll place your anchor hook. It's the nadir most handrail under the FHRC. We're looking for the nadir stanchion. All right, major expansion. I'm going to take close slide and walk to the green reel, which is unlocked. The yellow hook is locked, take close slide and walk. The red reel is unlocked. To my right steering extender, just get close slide and walk. Uh, and the green hook between the Green and red red heels is gate close slide one. Copy. That's a good config, Steve. We need Woody's anchor hook on handrail three two four seven, which is the zenith handrail. 
just above yours. Okay. That didn't work. What do you think? We close wire locks. If he's coming back to the airlock. Tabby, that is a good load pass for Woody. You can give Woody the go to release his waist tether. And would you have a go to release your waist tether? See, I copy picking it up. Steve, you can now translate to the FSE work site. You'll be dropping your green hook on S3, handrail 3011, which is nadir of the port seat of cart. 33011, not there, no. Copy. Steve, or Woody, excuse me, once that's complete, you can close the thermal cover. Uh, you broke up the jams, but uh, close thermal cover. Copy, Woody. Once that's complete, you can translate. You are headed to the crew lock bag stowage location on the port seat of cart. All right, Jenny, I copy. Thanks. Steve, when ready, I have cautions and a warning for you. Okay, stand by. All right, we're doing awesome. Warning, grapple shafts and curvet coupling are no touch. And cautions, no aggressive movements or quick grabs on the FSE. Translate slowly. Wait for motion to dampen out before imparting loads. And do not contact the IROSA blankets. All right, I understand and copy all. And with the thermal cover closed, Hoberg is now working to translate to the flight support equipment work site. This is essentially a pallet that is currently holding the IROSAs. I copy your green hook on handrail 3011. 3011 or 3011? 3011. Okay. Following this, Steve, you'll be translating onto the FSE via the POA. And the crew is running about 10 minutes ahead of today's timeline. Today's spacewalk is unique in that once the International Space Station rollout array or IROSA is installed, cables will need to be mated during an eclipse portion. So this spacewalk is very carefully chore choreographed to ensure that this timing takes place as necessary. And you are seeing this view from the helmet cam of NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who is completing his first spacewalk today. He's continuing to translate or move, make his way over to the pallet where the IROSAs are installed. M on port Theta cart Nader handrail. He's currently at the port CETA cart where he's going to temporarily drop off one of his crew lock bags. 
and he's also going to pick up an APFR, an articulating portable foot restraint, which will allow him to step into and ride on the Canada Arm 2. Hoberg will be carrying the IROSA while he's on the Canada Arm 2 in order to move it over to be installed. Today's solar array will be installed on the 1A power channel on the starboard truss of the International Space Station. Thirty seconds to a short handover. And we are in a brief expected handover between satellites, but we'll regain communications and video with the crew during their spacewalk here momentarily. Steve, Woody, I'm back with you after the handover. Copy. And I see that small bushing on the uh, lower Rosa. I'm passing it. Copy, you have eyes on the fog. Thanks, Steve. Woody, you will be picking up the APFR in WIS 3. Looks like you're already there. Should have an ingress aid. And it does. And this view from NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg's helmet camera as he works to pick up the articulating portable foot restraint from the port seat of cart. And he's just reporting the locking paddles on this APFR is very sticky. Copy, sticky locking paddles. Working on it. Uh, the paddles. Copy the paddles. Woody, this is in line with what we expect for this APFR. Copy a TCV of two for Woody. Negative seven. Copy seven. Just uh, confirming that the adjustable large small goes to zero 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 eight, and the integral goes to the upper handrail. A firm, that's right, uh, Steve. That handrail should be thirteen. Once that's done, I'll take a glove inspection half check. Uh, And 
while Hoberg works to secure that articulating portable foot restraint after grabbing it from the port seat of cart. We are going to hear Bowen complete a glove and hap check. You're headed to the inboard ingress location. The hap is the helmet absorption pad. And this is checked regularly throughout the spacewalk along with the gloves just to assure that everything is performing as expected. With the articulating portable foot restraint now in hand, Hoberg is going to work to install it on the Canada Arm 2. I've got the integral on 0013 and the large small adjustable on 008. Copy. Push that up a little bit. Woody, I have your next step, right. working with Frank to GCA to the published APFR install position. All right, James, I agree. Uh, Steve, do you need the comm? Just for one second, I'm going to head over to R5 on the upper, and I see it. And what am I setting there, Jenny, if I'm going to lose talk? And Steve, can you confirm that you've picked up the PGT? I left the ret on the bag, so that's now on your swing arm, and I need a glove inspection hat check. Okay, do the glove inspection hat check first. And you. We were getting a view there briefly of the IROSAs. There we see it again here, the International Space Station rollout arrays. There's two on that pallet on the very left of your screen. One of them is going to be installed today, and the other will be installed on June 15th. We're also getting a view of the Canada Arm 2, which Hoberg will be utilizing today when he moves the IROSA to the 1A power channel. All right, Jenny, I have the PGT, and we'll leave this rat on here, correct? A firm, leave the ret on your swing, or leave the ret on the bag and ret swap to the swing arm ret. Alright, that's going to work. If you give it the PGT setting, we can give the column to three. Bravo oh. two, counter two. Bravo two, counter two. Alright, I'll let you know if we get contact before I've done, if I haven't done it yet. Copy, and that was a good readback. And also in your frame there you can see a Dragon vehicle that actually brought up the ISS rollout solar arrays. That Dragon docked to the International Space Station on Monday. Following the docking, the ISS rollout solar arrays were removed from Dragon's trunk and placed on that pallet that you just saw there. And Next, our spacewalkers are going to work to remove that first IROSA solar array by um, removing some bolts and working through some procedures to loosen it up before it can be hand carried by Hoberg on the robotic arm. Have a meter to go. Continue. Copy, continue. Twenty to go. Continue to publish. Ten to go. Continue to publish. And we're ramping out.
Okay, we did that. Is our uh, published position? How's it? How's that looking? All right, Photon. Can you please give me five zero centimeters station meter? Copy with the uh, half a meter station meter in work. Thank you. I see good motion. Copy, good motion. Okay, 30 centimeters to go. Continue. Continuing. Okay, ramping out. Okay, we do that is half a meter station meter. Copy, Sultan. That is uh, GCA complete. That's a perfect position. All right, copy GCA complete, and brakes are coming on. Copy, brakes on. Bravo. And I'll be installing the APFR. Woody, we're looking That's for... That's You are going to install the APFR. Woody, we're looking copy for go. a clocking of 12. Copy, clocking 12, and I already confirmed Papa, Papa, Fox 6 set. Good settings. Steve, I'm back with you. Thanks, Jim. Five turns, Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2, and full throttle, releasing R5. Copy, the boat will spring out when fully released, and you'll see a white line indicator. Expect 18 to 20 turns. Hobart continuing to step through procedures to get that articulating portable foot restraint installed on the Canada Arm 2. This articulating portable foot restraint, or APFR, allows him to click his spacewalking boots into it so that he can ride aboard the Canada Arm 2. He'll be carrying the IROSA while he does so. The APFR is installed in the arm. Talking at 12, Papa Papa Fox 6. Always lock on black, good pull twist test, and the pitch knob can be depressed. Copy, Woody, good checks. Now we'll need you to perform a safety tether swap to the arm. Let me know when your yellow hook is on the SSRMS tether point, and I'll take your checks. All right, sounds good, Jenny. All right, that bolt is released. I got 27 turns. I let it do a couple of bumps. So that it would verify that it was clear. Copy. 27 turns and the bolt is fully released. Can you see a white line indicator? And yeah, there's a white line indicator. Copy. You can stow your PTT. And we are currently in an expected handover between our satellites. We do have communications with the crew. However, we do not have video at this moment, but we'll regain it. Copy. Translate to Stanchion Bravo. Hoberg has completed installing the APFR on the robotic arm. Hey, Jenny, my yellow hook is gate closed, locked, black on black for the SSRMS. Other point, green hook is stowed on mile marker 6360. And that green reel is unlocked. Copy, Woody. That is a good config. Insert, ensure that uh, Steve's tether is clear of your green hook, and then you can work with Frank to get to the ingress position. All right, let me get eyes on Steve's tether. It's well clear. And I am in a great config for APFR ingress, OGCA needed. Okay, Woody, we are copy and uh, brakes are still on. You are go for APFR ingress. Copy, brakes on, go for ingress. Thank you, so on. Woody, you need to attach a waist right, tether to the ingress aid. Travel. Yep, in work camps, thanks. 
And Steve, say, say again if I missed a call from you. I'm expected, Bravo. And Hoburg has successfully gotten that articulating portable foot restraint installed on the Canada Arm 2. He's now going to work to click his boots into the articulating portable foot restraint and ingress it. This will allow him to fly on the Canada Arm 2. And you are seeing him work to ingress that APFR on your screen right there. turns I have written here. All right, 18 to 20 turns. Okay. And Steve, I'm going to look for the con again when you have a chance. Hey, we'll take the call. Thanks. It's so on. I'm ready for trust back off. All right, copy. Uh, Woody, you are uh, ready and brakes are coming off. Copy, brakes off. Woody, ensure your check your tools and tethers are clear. We need you to confirm that. Yep, rules and tethers are all clear. Copy, I agree. You are a go to proceed. Woody, we also are hearing that your left safer handle might be up. We need you to check both of them. Got it. You, your team was correct. And both safer handles are down. Copy, both safer handles down on Woody. Thank you. You guys are doing great on time. When you are, we're going to bring you first station forward about um, 80 centimeters and then um, station later uh, 3 meters um, 60 centimeters. Claude, I'm ready for all of that. Here we go. And uh, starting motion station forward. Good motion, Fulton. Okay, good motion. And as you can see on your screen now, Hoburg now being moved while in that articulating portable foot restraint on the Canada arm. That Canada arm is being operated by United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi, who is inside the International Space Station. Hoberg is going to be translated to a better position to help NASA astronaut Steve Bowen remove some bolts and an anti-rotation device which will enable the IROSA to be released from the pallet. Following this, Hoberg will hand carry it while on the Canada Arm 2 over to the 1A worksite. Okay, two meters to go. Continue. Okay, one meter to go. And this view from NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg's helmet cam as he is 
on the Canon Arm 2. Looks like he's taking this opportunity to get some truly out of this world photography. And wrapping out. That looks good so far. Okay, with the just a heads up, next uh, we're going to take you to the Volt Axis Join our cast, and that'll be uh, two minutes and a half. I'm ready for that. Okay, thanks so far. Okay, Kenny, I've got Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2, set up. Uh, there were 20 turns. Uh, the lower Arosa uh, with a good white band. Copy, I release. I uh, understand R5 on the lower Rosa is released with 20 turns. Um, you should be pretty much at the bolts for C2. We are going to work on releasing these anti-rotation devices. So you can attach an adjustable equipment tether and from your small trash bag to the ARD tether point. Okay, we need to that done. Uh, ready when you are for the journal cast. I'm ready for conference. Then uh, start the motion. Copy. And Hoberg continuing to be moved on the Canada Arm 2. Meanwhile, Bowen is working with the Pistol Grip Tool, or PGT, to release bolts. This is a restraint bolt. Next up, he's going to work on releasing the anti-rotation devices. All of this is all of this is in preparation for ultimately removing the International Space Station rollout solar array from this carrier, this pallet that it is temporarily stowed on. And as Hoberg continues to make his way over to his first work site, the International Space Station is currently flying 258 statute miles off the coast of Nova Scotia over the North Atlantic Ocean. Woody, we need you to repower your HECA. Oh, actually, Jenny, I just pressed the power button and I see a green light, so it should be on now. Yes, we just needed you to power it on. That's correct. It was knocked off earlier. Okay, copy. Getting a really great view here of Woody Hoberg in the articulating portable foot restraint. Two. Good read back. The ten turns, correct? Yes, ten turns only. A reminder, these are not captive, so we only want to release ten turns. Ten turns only.
And in Hoberg's hand, you can see the PGT or pistol grip tool. This is essentially the space drill. It's going to be utilized a lot throughout today's spacewalk, first to remove the IROSA from the pallet and then to reinstall it on the 1A power channel. Copy. Thanks, James. Good reminder. I have Alpha 4 counter 2 set for R1 and R2. Those are good settings, Woody. It doesn't matter to us which of these bolts you do first, but the bolts will spring out when it's fully released. You have the same settings for both of them. All right, I get 8.8 .8 turns. Happy, that was eight turns. Steve, and you can remove the ARD, and then we'll be torquing back this bolt. All right, pulling the ARD off. I can start so far, I'm ready for game off. Okay, okay Woody, uh, we uh, need a few minutes, a few seconds to set up our values here. Take your time. Yeah, the ARD is removed. Happy ARD removed. Your settings are Bravo 1, clockwise 2, and you'll be driving this stop block bolt to torque. Bravo one clockwise two. That's it. Good settings. Bravo. One clockwise. Hey, we're ready for uh, the next motion. So it's going to be body and uh, meter and 60 uh, centimeters. Five, that sounds great. You go for that motion. Copy. Go and start the motion. Then. We are 48 minutes into today's spacewalk, and NASA astronaut Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg are continuing to work together to remove bolts from the International Space Station rollout solar array in order to release it so that it can be carried on the Canada Arm 2. To step through the next set of procedures is I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Anna Schneider, who's going to step through the next set of procedures with you. Okay, one minute to go, Woody. Continue. Yeah. All right, Steve, I copy 11 foot-pounds and a green light. Could you say turn count again? Turn count was... Point five. Half a meter to go. Continue. Got to continue. We're just checking on those turns, Steve. It's the uh, bumper rolled on top of the uh, mount. You might not get as many turns as you might have expected. Okay, so it's on stop motion. But you can look at it. It's it's on the nice and snug. We, uh, we are in the public position, and you are go for a bolting. Two words. On there. Copy. It's not turning. It's on the boat. It's on the amount. It didn't go past the amount. You see it? Now you can see NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg beginning to release the R bolts. All right, Steve, I'm sorry, one more time. We're going to have to have you say what you saw on those turns and whether you counted the turns or you're reading them off. Well, I counted the turns correctly. Bumper, the lock, but it turned and went onto the mount for the bolt expansion. Therefore, it is locked in place. You can still see threads below the uh, bumper, and the uh, C2 bolt is clear. All right. Thanks for the clarification again, Steve. This is a good bolt. You can store your PGT, and we'll have you translate to Stanchion Charlie for the Charlie 1 ARD. Okay. I'm going to Charlie for...
The bolts that Hoberg is working on um, are on the boom end of the upper IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array. The first two bolts will allow the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place to help with the array deployment later in the spacewalk. You rotating the deployment system. Both sprung out and it was 9.5 on R2. Copy, 9.5, that is a good bolt release, Woody. Uh, we need you to access R3 and R4 next. You can GCA if you need to. Um, I have new settings for you, and as a reminder, these will be the 245 turn bolts, so we need you in a good body position. You just heard confirmation that Woody Hoberg successfully released two of the bolts, and he's moving on to the second set. And Woody, we are ready. Okay, so it's on half a meter station, uh, correction, half a meter body down. And we copy half a meter body down. Okay, starting motion. Copy. Good motion. Copy, good motion. You're hearing some conversation between NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and UAE astronaut Sultan al Niadi, who is inside the space station operating the robotic arm as he moves Woody Hoberg down a little bit to access the next set of bolts. Okay, you can wrap out. Stopping out. Motion stopped. GCA complete. Copy, GCA complete. Steve, once in position, you can tether to the ARD tether point, and then I have settings for you for the stop block bolt. Complete. And I'm ready for settings. Bravo three, counter two, 10 turns only. Bravo three, counter two. And Jenny, I have alpha three, clockwise three for R3. Copy Alpha 3 for Clockwise 3. Verify, verify your PGT turn count is zero. Affirm it's zero. Copy PGT turn count is zero. You can release R3. Copy. Starting turns. Copy, Woody. The second set of bolts that Woody Hoberg is currently working on will release two of four mechanisms that hold the ISS rollout solar array in its rolled up configuration. When folded, the IROSA measures approximately 10 feet by 2 feet by 4 feet. Eight turns, and it's loose for the ARD. Copy eight turns on the ARD. You or on the stop block bolt, you can remove the ARD. No, remove the ARD. Remove. Ready for setting to drive back in. Bravo one, clockwise two. Bravo one, clockwise two. Thirty seconds from short handover. While NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg continues to work on those bolts, NASA astronaut Steve Bowen continues to work on the anti-rotation device. Copy, Steve. You've driven the stop block bolts. 12.1 torque, seven turns, and a green light.
Steve, I'm back with you after the handover, 12.1 torque, seven turns and a green light. You can stow the ARDs in the crew lock bag. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen has released both of the ARDs or anti-rotation devices and will begin stowing them in his crew lock bag. Here on the screen, we continue to see NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg work on releasing the second set of bolts on the boom end of the upper IROSA. And I think I pull out the, uh, tool, uh, the, uh, copy caddy. A firm, Steve, those are good, good words. We need the 5 8 12 inch wobble on your PGT and you can stow the 7 16 on the socket caddy. All right, and I'll put that in work. JRD is nice to stop in here. Copy with. Jenny, 245 turns, R3, turkey timer popped out. Copy, 245 turns on R3 with the turkey timer popped out. Your settings are alpha three, counter three for R4. Alpha three, counter three, thank you. Turns on the PGT. Here you go. Starting to. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is currently working on the last of the four bolts. These last two bolts release two of four mechanisms that hold the IROSA or ISS rollout solar array in its rolled up configuration. Steve, I copy a good pull test on the 716 12-inch on the socket caddy. That's correct. All right, good pull test on the 12-inch 5-inch wobble on my PGP. All right, and good pull test on the 5-8-inch 12-inch on your PGP. Steve, now we will be breaking torque on the IROSA FSE bolts. 
you can translate to bolt Charlie 1, which is Stanchion Charlie, should be right next to you. Charlie 1 right next to me. There's Charlie One. We'll be breaking torque on this bolt less than half a turn. Your settings are Bravo Three, Counter Two. Your settings are Bravo Three, Counter Two. Bravo Three, Counter Two. Good work. And now I get myself in a good position. Good words. Less than half a turn, correct? A firm. And big picture uh, for all crew, we are about a minute and a half from an LOS. We have voice calm for the first five minutes. And for the last five minutes, I'm still prime IV. I will hand over to Frank when I need to. And Jenny, do you want copies that I had 0.54 turns from C1? Copy. Torque broken on C1. You can translate to C2. Copy, uh, Woody, great job, R4 release, 245 turns, and you see the turkey timer. You can work with Frank to move to the carrier back off. You just heard confirmation that NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg finished releasing the fourth bolt. That bolt was holding the IROSA in its rolled up configuration. Good and uh, this is basically the big view. Body out, 1 meter 60 centimeters, and that is station forward. You also heard them reference something called a turkey timer. Um, that is basically just a status indicator to ensure that the bolts are fully released. We are now in a, an expected handover that will last about 15 minutes. We are currently about one hour and five minutes into today's spacewalk. It began at 8.25 Central Time this morning, 9.25 a.m. Eastern Time, when the spacesuit switched to battery power. Steve Bowen, who is EV-1 with the red stripes, egressed the crew lock and received a crew lock bag. And then EV-2, who is Woody Hoberg, followed him shortly after. Bowen then translated up the forward face of the trust and went starboard, config 
configuring his safety tethers on the way, and then Hoberg followed a similar path, but went to the port crew equipment translation aid, or CETA cart, to temporarily stow his bag and retrieve the articulating portable foot restraint. Bowen then translated to the IROSA, or International Space Station, rollout solar ray carrier, stowed his bag, and retrieved the pistol grip tool. Bowen began preparing the IROSA for removal from the carrier, first releasing a restraint bolt on the upper IROSA. Meanwhile, Woody Hoberg relocated the foot restraint and installed it on the space station's robotic arm. From there, Woody Hoberg ingressed the foot restraint and then that the arm moved him away from the truss and towards the work site. Bowen translated to the lower IROSA and released its first restraint bolt and then released both anti-rotation devices on the upper IROSA and stowed them in the crew lock bag. While on the robotic arm, Woody Hoberg was flown over to access two different sets of bolts on the boom end of the upper IROSA. The first two bolts allowed the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place to help with the array deployment later in the spacewalk. And then the second two bolts released two of four mechanisms that hold the IROSA in its rolled up configuration. The goal of today's spacewalk is to install an IROSA, or International Space Station Rollout Solar Array, to augment power generation for the 1A power channel on the space station's starboard truss. The new solar arrays measure 60 feet long by 20 feet wide once they're deployed and shade a little more than half of the original solar arrays, which are 112 feet long by 39 feet wide. Each new IROSA produces more than 20 kilowatts of electricity and once installed will enable a 30% increase in power production over the station's current arrays.
There's about six minutes left in this 15 minute loss of signal before we'll return to seeing Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg working on today's spacewalk. Once we're back, we'll see uh, Steve Bowen working on releasing the upper iroso restraint bolt and installing the first two handling aids called scoops in preparation for removing the iroso or International Space Station rollout solar array from the carrier. Currently aboard the International Space Station, we have the Expedition 69 crew, which includes NASA astronauts Frank Rubio, who is inside the space station helping with today's spacewalk. Um, also inside the space station is UAE astronaut Sultan Al Niadi and Roscosmos cosmonauts Sergei Prokopyov and Dmitry Patelin. And then, of course, our spacewalkers today are NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg. Here in the room, we have the flight director, Diane Daly, at the helm, and she goes by the call sign Horizon Flight. And then serving as the prime ground IV, we have Ginny Gibbons.
There's about one minute left in this loss of signal, and then we'll quickly return to seeing what Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen are progressing. Today's spacewalk is the 264th spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly, Maintenance, and Upgrades, and the seventh spacewalk out of the space station for this year. I'm ready to continue. You have about 40 minutes to go. Stop. Good motion. Good morning. So during that loss of signal, um, Steve Bowen released the upper IROSA restraint bolts and installed the first two handling aids called scoops in preparation for removing the IROSA from the carrier. Clear, continue. You can now hear some discussion between NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who is on the Canada Arm Robotic 2, um, and UAE astronaut Sultan Al Niadi, who is inside the space station uh, maneuvering the arm. So is that looking, uh, Woody, do you want uh, any further GCA? Yep, that's that thing. Stand by. Tom, could I please go body down about 20 centimeters? They are flying Woody Hoberg to the hinge end of the Woody upper IROSA. Once there, both uh, Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen will work to remove the final bolts holding it to the carrier. And then Steve Bowen will install a second scoop, and Woody Hoberg will then lift it off of the carrier. And still talking, that's a great spot. GCA complete. Okay, GCA complete, and that was uh, 15 centimeters body down. Perfect. We copy GCA complete. Woody, attach a ret to the scoop, which is on IROSA. Okay, James, I have a ret on the scoop on IROSA. Left, left side. Copy. Uh, warning for both of you. With okay, Jenny, I have... Steve, go. <laughs> so say I have the first scoop on my Vinnie Wurst station. This is a long duration tie down tether. Uh, do I need to bring the ret with that or do I leave the ret transfer to Woody's ret? Yeah, be adjustable as well. You can leave the ret. You'll stow it on your mini workstation, and uh, Woody will use a ret from his mini workstation in order to tether to it. Okay, so first thing. we can get ahead on our checks here. Uh, so a warning. For both of you, do not release C1 until I give you the go. Copy. Copy. I'll take a glove inspection and half check from Woody. There's no change to the gloves. Cap is dry. 
I can also report uh, visor down, glove heaters on, TCV set for reference. Copy, good glove inspection and hat check. Cooling visor glove heaters are set. Check gauntlets down. They're both down. Check tools and tethers are clear and your ingress aid is clear. Tools, tethers, and ingress aid all clear. Check heels secure in the APFR. Yeah, and James, did you guys happen to get eyes on my heels just for positive confirmation there? Or can Steve see them? Checking. Woody, we do not have eyes on your feet, but Steve could potentially That's check if looking. you need. Hold on, it's going to take a bit to rotate here. Okay, I'm feeling quite confident, so I'm, I think you look pretty good, Woody. Yeah, I agree. All right, heels are secure, James. Thanks. Copy, Woody. Those are good checks. We will pause here. Copy. And, uh, Benny, when I transfer, I am not transferring the adjustable to Woody, just the scoop and the blood ration tie down. Feather, and I keep the adjustable with me to pick them up later, correct? Checking, Steve. I think it's just a scoop and a long duration. I do too, but I want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, that's right, Steve. So yeah, there's the... no requirement to take the adjustable with you. You can have it if you want, but we just need the scoop and the long duration tie down tether bundled together and the red swap to Woody's work, mini workstation. Okay, understand. And Woody, if you have a red, I don't really, I sure do. Here's a red. I don't know if you can reach me. Oh, yeah, you can send that over here. I've got several things on there right now, so. Okay. See it? So, goals to get this red on the scoop? Yeah. Okay, it is on, so scoop. Okay, you can release the plant that adjustable then. You got it. Keep long duration. Is coming back. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. All right, let me get that clip on here. Now we'll get set up. Copy, we have a couple of additional checks here as well. We need a glove inspection and hat check from Steve and a buddy check of each other's helmets for signs of water. You have your visor down. Yeah, see your helmet? Actually, stay right there, Steve. Okay, I have a good view into Steve's helmet. Uh, I can see his hat and his hat uh, absorption band, and I see no signs of water. I agree. Copy. Steve, I'll flip my visor up for you. And I see no signs of water. I see your helmet absorption bad. And I no indication of water. Looks good. Great. And my gloves are the same. They're still good, and my hat is dry. Copy. We have good checks. And as a reminder, Woody, we track you holding that scoop at this time. It needs to be readied to you, but Steve needs to be holding it. He will be the one installing it after C1 release. Yep, concur. All right, let me go to the guitar hole for it earlier. Thank you. Yep. We are now about one hour and 27 minutes into today's spacewalk before Woody Hoberg and okay, Steve Bowen remove the final bolt holding the IROSA to the carrier. They're performing a series of glove and hop checks. Uh, you are both doing great on time. We are an hour up. All right, copy that. All right, great, James, thanks. All right, next as written, I have uh, Steve releasing Charlie 1 fully. Woody, you are going to maintain control of IROSA as he releases that bolt and installs the scoop. Okay, Jan, sounds good. I've got IROSA. Hey, right, I need settings. Bravo 3, counter 3, fully release C1. The bolt will spring out. Expect 26 turns. 
Turbo threes, counterclockwise threes, and about 26 turns in bullshit spring out. That's right, so starting right now. Good words. You just heard the ground IV here in the room, Jenny Gibbons, um, to speak with the NASA astronauts outside the space station, Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen. They were given the go to release the IROSA. So both crew members are now working to remove the final bolt holding the IROSA to the carrier. Bowen will then install a second scoop while uh, Hoberg lifts the IROSA off of its carrier. Got uh, 27 turns. Had to come off. I think I need to turn a few more. Just put not three of this bolt. Copy 27 turns so going for more. Turns. All right now that seems very loose. I get an additional concerns. Does it feel weak? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it feels, yeah, quite loose. Okay. Let's go with PGT and get those scoop and plus. That's great. Good words. All right, I have the scoop locked on. I hope that's a good config, Woody. That's great, Steve. I have Irosa. You have Irosa. Ground copies, we agree we're in a good config. Steve, we need you at the grapple tower to assist with this GCA. Make sure Irosa clears the fix grapple fixture. And I have cautions and a warning for both of you when ready. All right, I am in a good position to watch clearances from the grapple fixture. And ready for warnings. Caution, prior to removing IROSA, ensure the FSE is not moving. Steve, you stay still on the FSE during the release. And warning, don't put your fingers in or around any of the pin slots mounted on the inside and outside of the root beam. With that, I will let you work together to release IROSA. To do that, Woody, you will be sliding IROSA away from you to release from the FSE pin slot interface. Okay, Jams, I believe that has already happened. <laughs> I think so, too. Copy. Right, I still have control of it. We're looking good. All right. So ready for GCA. <laughs> you're go to work with Frank? You for GCA. All right, Frank, if you're ready, I'm ready for the iris in the back off position. I've got a good eye on the tower. And I'm looking for this to go straight. And uh, Woody, uh, it's drifting a little bit toward the tower. Going to bias it a little back. Okay, that's fine. Good. Ready to go, Fred. All right, Steve, we copy. And uh, for this motion, uh, we expect about uh, four meters. And for Woody, it's going to be body down. Okay. Three. And we are starting motion. You heard confirmation that NASA astronaut Steve Bowen has installed the second scoop onto the carrier and uh, Woody Bowen or Woody Hoberg has lifted it off of the carrier. There will now be several maneuvers with Hoberg on the robotic arm and then he will arrive at the 1A mod kit work site. During these maneuvers, Steve Bowen will pick up the temporarily stowed crew lock bag from the port cart and reconfigure both of his safety tethers on his way to meet Hoberg at the mod kit. We are clear of the pin. Continue. Continuing where we have uh, three meters to go. Continue. Oh, continue. 
Houston copies, since we are clear of the grapple tower, and this is a procedure to publish position, I'm going to pick up com with Steve. Steve, perform a socket swap. I need the 5, 8, 12 inch wobble on the socket caddy and the 2 inch from your trash bag on your PGT. Understand the 5 8 going to the socket caddy, the 2 inch from my trash bag coming on my PGT. Good words. I'll take pull test for everything, and then you will be cleaning up the crew lock bag with everything inside of it, doors facing the FSE. Understand. From this view, you can see NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg on uh, attached to the space station's robotic arm as he moves away with the International Space Station rollout solar array. Copy. Okay, that is the public position, Woody, and just a heads up, our next motion is going to be the Rosa pitch join of uh, all counts of two and a half minutes. Copy, I'm ready. Okay, Jenny, I have a good pull test on all three sockets on the soccer caddy. I'm going to spill them in the we walk back first before I do my too much. I copy, Steve. You have completed the pull test, correct? That is correct. And all three of the sockets on the socket caddy, that's complete. Copy. Again, you can stow that socket caddy. We'll have the crew lock bag buttoned up with the doors facing the FSE and the adjustable equipment tether cinched. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg continues to make his way on the robotic arm with the IROSA to the 1A mod kit worksite. Okay, so on the outside of the crew lock bag, I should have the needle nose, the wire tie, and an adjustable. And then I need a small, large, small adjustable attached to the lower handrail. And then this rat should come with me if I'm eating this correctly. Am I correct? There should be no rat on the outside. That rat can go into the bag, Steve. I understand. I'll just put it in the bag. On the left side of your screen, you can see the helmet camera of NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. He is currently working to pick up the temporarily stowed crew lock bag from the port cart and reconfigure both of his safety tethers on his way to meet Woody Hoberg at the mod kit. Once they both arrive at the mod kit site, both crew will then work to install the IROSA onto the 1A mounting bracket.
Modi, we are ready for the Arosa pitch. Uh, join OCAS, and we will give you a countdown before we start. And just remember uh, the uh, pitch maneuver. Ron, that's perfect. I'm ready. All right, then starting join OCAS in three, two, one. Starting motion. Okay, lower slow, fence down. Okay, Good the motion. upper stanchion. I'm going to press the back facing. Uh, Copy, Steve. Great work. Once complete, you can translate off of the FSC via the POA. All I'll do it later. I'll do my two-inch transfer when I stop again. I saw the two-inch in my trash bag. Didn't put it on the PCC yet. We need that two-inch on your PGT, Steve. I understand. I'll get it when I stop. Okay. That sounds great. You can do that at the market. I have to go pick up the bag and uh, pick up Woody's tether. Hey, Firm, your first step once you are off of the FSE is to retrieve your green hook from 3011. Good. I'll do that then, right there. The our next motion is going to be an outboard joint cast of three minutes. Find that copy and I'm ready. Okay, we are starting motion for the journal cast uh, for the EVL code. Okay, I'm ready. Another countdown would be great. I'll be starting in three, two, one. Currently on your screen, you can see NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg uh, as he is on the space station's robotic arm moving the International Space Station rollout solar array to the 1A mod kit worksite.
Today's spacewalk is the 264th spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly, Maintenance, and Upgrades, and the seventh spacewalk out of the International Space Station for this year. Today's spacewalkers are NASA astronauts uh, Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg. They are working to an in install an IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array. This will augment the power generation for the 1A power channel on the station's starboard truss structure. The new arrays, once unfurled, measure approximately 60 feet in length by 20 feet wide, and they shade a little more than half of the original arrays. Each new IROSA will produce more than 20 kilowatts of electricity and once installed will enable a 30% increase in power production over the station's current arrays. This spacewalk is the ninth spacewalk for NASA astronaut Steve Bowen and the first spacewalk for NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. Copy the two inches installed on your PGT with a good pull test. I just heads up uh, with the uh, next motion is going to be an IA line up for uh, four hour and uh, expecting three minutes. So far, it sounds great. I'm ready. Green hook is retrieved. Copy, Steve, you have your green hook. After this, you'll get the bag and Woody's green hook. All right, bringing up the bag and Woody's green hook. Good words. Okay, Woody, we are ready to start the motion, and this will put you in line up uh, position under the IEA. All right, Fulton, I'm ready. Okay, starting in three, two, one. Start the motion. Motion. Copy, good motion. Steve and Woody will be in insulation in about two minutes. Hey, my copy. Thanks, James. We are now about one hour and 48 minutes into today's spacewalk. We are actually about an hour ahead of the scheduled timeline. Once they arrive at the mod kit site, they will begin the process to install the IROSA onto the 1A mounting rocket. On my BRT, and releasing it from the Steve account. Copy, Steve.
During the installation process for the International Space Station rollout solar array, the crew will release the scoops and Woody Hoberg will then move into position to release the final bolt holding IROSA into its folded position. Once released, Woody Hoberg will hold IROSA closed. Uh, Once released, Steve Bowen will hold IROSA closed while Woody Hopeberg egresses or exits his foot restraint and gets into position. Both crew will then work together to unfold IROSA and secure the right side onto the mounting bracket. Once secured, Woody Hopeberg will then drive two hinge bolts that, I that IROSA into the folded unfolded position. Copy, Steve. Woody's green hook is at around mile marker 6300. 6300. Hey, firm, it'll be on 6300. Six zero exactly. Turn back that way. Uh, see your green hook. Copy. We are ready uh, for you to go for the GCA to pop the shadows and install. So, Todd, I'm ready. I see body left. That's affirmative. We are expecting a first motion of the body left, and it's going to be uh, 2 meters, 40 centimeters, and then followed by a body up, and that is uh, 70 centimeters. Okay, sounds great. So, Todd, I'm ready. Okay, I have Woody. Green reel on my right waist tether. Now I'm going to translate out to F4. Copy, Steve, and I might have missed it, but I need to check that reels are unlocked and your gauntlets are down. All right, reels unlocked. Gauntlets are down. Can you start my translation? Copy. Like you said, you're headed to the S4 IEA. I have words on where to attach Woody's green hook when you're ready. All right. I'll give you a call in a minute. Woody, we are ready to start watching body left in three, two, one. On the big loop, for all crew, do not start this next motion. Stand by one while we sink up on the ground. Copy ramping out and then uh, all standing by. That was good motion, full time, but hold position now. More, Copy, hold. more information for all of you on that call. Everything is looking like it's in good shape. You guys are doing great on the timeline. We just, since we are ahead, we want to hold and get all crew in position. Does that mean? means we'll have time for Steve to drop the green hooks and get in a good position by the mounting bracket before we go to the install position. From there, we will push with the procedure as written. Walter Woody, you pretty well me. You're doing great, Steve. Thanks for doing all the work while I just ride the arm. And Ivy Brew, Ivy Brew, come. All right, great job, everybody. From this view, you can see both uh, astronauts working on today's spacewalk. In the upper right hand side of your screen, you see NASA astronaut Steve Bowen as he works to configure some safety tethers and 
work his way over to the mod kit site to meet Woody Hoberg. And then a little bit further down is NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg aboard the uh, International Space Station's robotic arm holding on to the International Space Station rollout solar array, or IROSA, as he makes his way to the mod kit site. Copy, Steve. All right, you're all okay. yep. You're looking for handle. Oh, so I'm looking for which uh, handle number for his screen. 2219. And I'm ready to 2219. I'm ready to drop this hook here. We'll come in, Copy. And you'll be fair leading Woody's tether around the outside edge of the IEA. The outside edge of the IEA for his fair lead. Copy. Good words. Just for awareness, I'm right behind you and a little to the left. All right. All right, your green hook is now on 2219. And I release my face tether. Copy. Good words, Steve. Back, and it looks clear of my tether. Good words, and confirm the reel is unlocked. And his reel is? See a big U, unlocked. Good config, Steve. You can continue on your translation path. Your next step is to drop your green hook, handrail 2218. 2218, heading down to Drop my green hook here at 2218. Good words. Green hook is on 2218. Copy, green hook 2218. Check your tethers are clear and you're good to continue. Checking my tethers. Steve, I've got a good view, it looks great. All right, let's get to here. Let me check my waist tether here. So much, I'm going to get this untangled from my uh, TGP. Absolutely. Copy. Do you have much of a view? All right, I see my tether clear now. Copy, Steve. I have a and, caution. Uh, clear. I bet the. Uh... Go ahead, James. Go ahead, James. Your caution is avoid translation on the PVR handrail near 2230. 2230. Steve, you'll continue your translation to the left side of the mounting bracket. Check your tether routing for snags and crosses and place fair leads such that your tether is running around the perimeter of the IEA. Okay, let me get myself in the continue. Okay. 
I'm looking for a fair lead on the corner, I guess. 235. I have your oh. fair lead handrail written as 2248. But 235 is fine, Steve. It will do the same thing. Okay. We'll be right in the same spot. Copy. That sounds good. We are 45 seconds from a short good. handover. Very translating up to the whole mountain. Copy, Steve. And once you are in a good spot, uh, you can resume this motion for the IROSA install position. All right, let me drop my bag off real quick. Actually, where are you, Woody? Oh, there you are. There I am. <laughs> Give me one second to get stable. All right, sounds great. Over to Frank and Tulsan. Ready to continue. Okay, copy. Ready to continue, Woody. And again, this is going to be a continuation of the body left. And we'll give you a countdown here in three, two, one. Starting motion. The motion. And copy the motion. Two meters to go. Continue. We continue. Meter to go. Continue. Oh, continue. Half a meter to go. You. Copy, continue. I'm ramping out uh, body left motion. Okay, that looks good. Right, uh, ready to start the body up motion? Hey, for I'm ready for body up. Okay, starting in three, two, one. Good motion. Topic this motion. Half a meter to go. Continue. I'll continue. Let's hold position there. Hold position. Feels a little high, actually. I think they're a little high and a little short. You need to come toward me. Another uh, 40 centimeters. Yeah, I see that, Steve. Um, and you are still a little high. Yeah, so Tom, could I come here by checking? Yeah, take the scoop off when you close the off. Actually, this feels pretty good, so Tom, can we just go body in 40 centimeters? Okay, what do you want to give you that body in? 20 centimeters. Starting motion in can you, three. Can you take your hands off. Two. Right, here you go. Continue. Okay, starting motion in three, two, one. Motion. I agree. Pretty good. 
You are hearing conversation between NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and Sultan Al Niyadi, who is a UAE astronaut inside the space station operating the space station's robotic arm. I'm ready to take the scoop off. Right, the uh, soft docks are set. They've not been cycled. But they were yeah, cycled just a, a little bit ago. Houston's back with you. We, oh, we see that the soft captures are in a good position. We do not need to cycle them. Steve, hold IROSA steady while Woody removes the scoop. And I have some cautions and warnings I need to read. Warning, when you're on the aft side of the mod kit, Steve, avoid contacting the legacy blanket boxes and trunnions. Caution, while you're both on the mod kit, don't simultaneously impart loads. Sudden stops and quick grabs are not allowed on the mod kit. 30 pound max lateral load on the mod kit. And finally, confirm no BGA motion prior to installing IROSA. Copy all. Copy all. Sounds great, James. Thank you. And Stephen Woody, just to confirm that you don't need any further GCA, and uh, we'll call it complete. Can you, yeah, give 20, complete. Can you give me 20 centimeters toward uh, Mass Canada? So what do you do? Do you have enough for that? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's GCA complete. I agree. All right. Uh, GCA complete, and brakes are coming on. Copy, brakes are on. Houston right, copies. Brakes are on. You can work Canada. together for install. Uh, just go slow, Steve. Yep, I agree. Going real slow this way? Yep. Moving my uh, perch here. Okay, for the push, for the mass canister. Okay, I see them starting to get in. Oh, they can continue to toward the mass canister. I run it up into something. Let's see. Get eyes on it. Both of our spacewalkers have made their way to the 1A mod kit work site. From here, the crew will work together to install the IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array onto the 1A mounting bracket. Are we aligned with the slots? We are in the slots. We are just waiting to continue to the left. How does the uh, soft dock look on your side? They're still popped out. Do they just need to be popped, pushed down? No, they should be fine. They should come right through. All right, if you can still come by toward the mass canister, that's all we need. Uh, I'm running up against something when I try to push that direction. Okay. You push your side, I'll hold mine. Let me just look at it real quick. Okay. Steve, your oh, HECA yeah. oh. might be contacting Irosa and preventing the soft dock. You might have to adjust your body position. Oh, I understand. Okay, working on that. Okay, let's try that, Woody. Pushing hard left. It's just... How does the soft dock work? You know what, I think we need to pull up on the soft dock. Maybe to let it pass. Okay. See if I can get that. Oh yeah, that's... That's the problem. All right, let me get this one. Okay, I think I'm in on my side. And let's try to get that. that. That's good, Steve. All right, so, okay, you okay, my side's in, soft talk, or soft capture, turn when in. Front is not in, I don't think. You're really close. Uh, you might be in the detent, so try Popping it out of the little detent. Yeah, turn it a little. Yep, and now in. Let me look. Yeah, I think it's just in the little lip that holds the pin. I think we're in the right position with Irosa. And you're. Okay, I wish I can get this. Real side, real quick? Yep. into your la uh, right. Yep, I see. I'm hitting it. All right, let me try and get down here. There you go. Nice. 20 seconds to a short handover. Copy, Jeff. 
it needs to turn um, clockwise from above. Clockwise from above. Other other way. Other way. Yep. Now it should go in. We are in a brief but expected handover period. We will we'll receive camera views from the space station in about 10 seconds. Um, i try and get her better. Houston's back with you. How to get there. Okay, so Jenny, just to describe what we're seeing, we believe Iros is in a good position. Um, the center most. Okay, so I got it. Okay, so you just got it. took a little bit more. Got two pins in. Yeah, we agree. We have a really good view from your Hecka Woody. So good job at this point. Uh, Irosa is soft dog, so you can release your ret from the scoop and maneuver to the R6 back off. Steve, for you, you're finalizing the config for the crew lock bag, and you will eventually receive the scoop bundle from Woody when he's ready. Yes, Any chance you can uh, pass me a threat? Do you get a chance? Sure, give me one second so they can get on. Thank you. For both of you, our, we're, we are just over two hours into an EVA tracking for seven hours and 30 minutes. Limiting consumable is battery on Woody, and you guys are still about an hour ahead on the timeline. Well done. Thanks, James. Can we the other way to give you the route? Okay. If now's not a good time, we can wait. Okay, just give me one second to drop off the bag, and then it'll. Um, oh, here, can you reach this? Oh, yeah, that might work. Coming at you. The crew is now working to release the scoops. And then Woody Hoberg will move into position to release the final bolt holding Irosa in its folded position. Let us know what you need. That sounds great. I'll be, uh, oh, actually, ooh, I bet I can just do that. Let me take a look at that. If you have the position, you're go, you Woody. The settings, James. Okay. Bravo two, counter two. Right. Copy your I have a scoop on the uh, long duration. There's, yeah, you should have two scoops there, Steve. Okay, you ready to get your rep back? I'll give it to you. Let me know when you. Yeah, go ahead. Got it, Trumps. Got it? Super. Yep, I got it. All right, let me get this Steve, once you temp stow these uh, scoops, and the long duration. They can just be temp stow for now, but that's up to you. At the crew lock bag, we'll need you to position to hold Irosa in a folded config while Woody does this bolt for and sure. then egress this APFR. Let me get the, the bag in place and then I'll be uh, pretty much set to do that. Bravo to counter two, Scott James. Copy, those are good settings. You'll be releasing R6. The bolt will spring out when fully released. You'll see a white line indicator. Expect 18 to 20 turns. Okay, wait one second. You want me to wait? Yeah, because I'm not in a place. Oh, I gotcha. I'm in a great place to control it, though, Steve. All right. Well, if you want to stay there, then that's fine. I just got to just drag in place and clean up. 
great. Okay, Johnny. Sixteen turns, and we got the uh, white line visible. Inch bolt is released. Copy R six released. Sixteen turns. You see the white line. You can store your PGT. Complete. And uh, Frank and Sultan, for your awareness. I suspect my plan will be to hop out of the arm here eventually. No, what do you copy? And the bag, the handrail, and the scoots to the bag. Nice job, Steve. And get the bag off my DRT. Okay. Copy, Steve. Do those scoops go in the bag eventually? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. They do okay. eventually, but in the procedure, that'll be around the time when you retrieve the AMS knob. It's just crew preference. You can temp stow them for now if you want. Nice. Yeah, okay. that's what I'm going to do. For you and uh, for Steve and Woody, um, we copy Woody that you think you can egress from here. That's no problem with us, and we're coordinating with Robo and the IV team. Steve, we see you getting in position to hold IROSA folded. We'll need you to okay. we'll need you to do that while Woody egress is using only the ingress aid. All right, let me get my hand on the other handrail. I guess it's an old one yeah, I think your time, Steve. Just watch your helmet is closing uh, the other side of that row. So, yeah. Let me get my feet up then. I'll yeah. do that. That's under town. NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen just worked to release the final bolt holding IROSA or the ISS rollout solar array in its folded position. From here, uh, Steve Bowen will continue to hold IROSA closed while Woody Hoberg egresses or exits his foot restraint and gets into position. Yeah, we saw that. Thanks, Woody. After that, the crew will work together to unfold IROSA and secure the right side onto the mounting bracket. Right. Okay, I think I'm going to do this. Okay, I think I'm going to get my body around here. All right, what do you think I'm doing? Okay, just so you know, your HECA is like touching IROSA, but as long as you're not pressuring it, it should be, yep. Looks like it's just light, so yep. should be a good config. All right, Steve, you've got it. I have it. Okay. For your awareness, we see that contact. It's on the root beam and ground's fine with it, so you two are doing a great job. Woody, you can egress using only the ingress aid. Gotcha. Only the ingress aid. My feet are out. Copy. You can check the ingress aid is low profile. Actually, that is going to be interesting. Let's see. <laughs> If you get on the expansion, you might have uh, GCA just to yeah, get the I might need a GCA just to stow the ingress in, unfortunately. Easier, yeah. Take a look here real quick. And Woody, we have we copy and we're standing by. Okay, thanks for that. Actually, I got it. So this is good. Ground copies all. 
From this view, you can see that Woody Hoberg has egressed the foot restraint from the robotic arm. All right. If I am in a C, get my eyes on this soft dock. Yeah, I'm in a good position. So, you want to cycle it? I can um, pull it. To make sure it's free. I just got. I want to think about my safety tether. So. Yeah. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is now moving into position uh, to unfold IROSA uh, to help secure it to the right side of the mounting bracket alongside NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. Move to that position. Yeah, we might need that. As soon as it's clear, we can open this. Yep, I agree with that. James, is that making sense to you guys too? Woody and Steve, we've been talking about the uh, arm position and your tether here on the ground, and we think it's best if we maneuver to the tether swap position. Yep. That makes sense to us too, Jams. We like it. All right. You can initiate that with... Woody and Steve. You can initiate that with M1. Once you do that, since that's a published position, I have some big picture words for you because we need to pause anyway before you put in a fair lead, Woody. But you can go ahead and coordinate with M1 for now. Okay, great. So we're ready for you to move to the published other swap position. Okay, Woody, we copy. Uh, this will take us uh, three maneuvers to get to that position, and uh, we'll let you know when we're there. All right, sounds great, Sultan. I'll be watching while the arm's near us. We'll, start, we'll be starting with uh, the uh, back of position, and we're expecting about uh, two meters, uh, like any of body was uh, body right. Okay, yeah, body right looks correct. That sounds great. Okay, brakes are coming off. Woody and Steve, we're just getting those big picture words together for you. We have another couple minutes, and then I'll have them. Thanks, Jim. Well, if you're in under cover, they did clear. All right, I have those. Okay, we start in motion now. Go. I have those big picture words for you. Let's let uh, M1 start the next motion, and then I'll pass them. All right, I understand M1's already maneuvering to the backup position. So, you guys ready? Yep. Good motion. Ready. All right, big picture, you are doing great. Um, we have a really good timeline laid out in front of us. So good, in fact, that there is a potential that the next eclipse could be our working eclipse for our cable mates. That's in around 25 minutes. So we might break out of bolts and take that opportunity while we have it, and I'll keep you both up to date on that. Um, there is no rush because, again, our nominally planned eclipse was the following one. Um, how copy? You need two copies. That sounds great, Jams. It does. All right, good. Next piece of information I have for you is that we have noticed that a grounding pin is out of place on the mod kit. It's at the base of the mounting bracket where the mounting bracket meets the left lower strut. 
after the unfold, we're going to have to address that uh, grounding pin. It should be no problem, but I will let you know and I'll give you those words again when the time is right. Sure. And just to be clear, that's on Steve's side and we don't want him to check it now. Sure. I'm not going anywhere. I can't let go. <laughs> we agree. Please keep hanging on. All right, that's uh, I see there's starting to be some light. Those are all the big picture words that I have for both of you. We will pick up after these robo maneuvers with a fair lead for Woody and then start to uh, work toward unfolding Irosa. Your warning is that this is a pinch point and you'll need to keep clear of rotating Irosa. Where's your fairly? Is that straight there? Yeah. I was wondering that to you. But you might be able to head that way, and then when he gets a little lower, just drop it. Your fair lead is going to be on the right lower strut, lower handrail, Woody. Right, lower strut, lower handrail, got it. That means once we only have it through the session, the windows will be clear then. And Woody, you need to hold. The reason why we're waiting is because we cannot put this fair lead in while the arm's moving. I understand, Jim. I was just checking out the location. Thank you. All right, no problem. Okay, Woody and Steve, we are starting. Our next motion is going to be a journal cast, and it will be two and a half minutes. Okay, we copy. There we go. Starting motion. Stable, what do you take the pictures of our dragons? That's a good idea, stand by. We are about two hours and 27 minutes into today's spacewalk as NASA astronaut Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg continue to install the International Space Station rollout solar array onto the 1A starboard truss. They are about an hour ahead on their scheduled timeline and now targeting a working eclipse about 21 minutes from now for the cable meeting. Since you have your visor down, take a selfie, you'll get the whole, I think you can check the station. The cable mating is when both of the crew members will work to electrically connect the new IROSA to the International Space Station's power system. They'll first attach four connectors to IROSA and then both will move to either side of the legacy solar array to disconnect the old array and connect a Y cable. This will allow power to flow from both the new IROSA and the old legacy array to the space station's power system.
Woody, when able, power on your HECA. It's been powered off again. Green light, that's good. Complete jams, thanks. Copy all, thank you. What is the arm even moving? From my perspective, it's tough moving. Yeah, I can cover. I think they're setting up for the Joe Okay. And uh, Woody, uh, we are starting our next joint cast. It'll last three minutes, and then uh, we'll sync up with you. And uh, it's going to be um, step in here to meet with you and for the tennis one. Okay, continue. So far, we're ready. Okay, starting motion for the general cast. Motion. Okay, motion. From this view, you can see NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg near the IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array, and the robotic arm is currently backing away. See, Jenny, if I happen to have a cap keeper in my hand, would it be a good to remove the J1 through J4 cap? You can do that, Woody. Okay, copy, thanks. On the other side of the folded IROSA is NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. Steve Bowen is continuing to hold the IROSA closed. And there's your tool. Ah, uh, yes. A good hook. What's that? That's a good hook? A good release? Thanks, Steve. You are you are seeing the helmet camera of NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg as he configures some of his safety tethers. 
Once his safety tethers are reconfigured, the crew members will work together to unfold IROSA or the International Space Station rollout solar array and secure the right side onto the mounting bracket. Bill Four Cooler, I agree. I just grabbed the AMS knob while I've got it. Very good idea. Houston copies. We'll do the uh, NGGL pass too. Yeah, let me look at that. Stand by. Okay. And. AMS now is ready to my MIDI workstation. Sounds good. And J1 through J4 caps removed. Jeremy, they're in crew lock bag on. We copy, Woody. the scoops in, Steve, too. Yeah, if you can put them in, I'd greatly appreciate it. Of course. We have an integral RET farm, right? Yeah, there should be a RET available for that. For that. that was the one that you left? Yep. Want the adjustable external? Uh, I don't think we need an external. Okay. Yeah, let's put that in the bag. Okay, do we need the external for the adjustable? Are we going to use that later on to grab anything else? I'm crew lock bag M. I'm crew lock bag M. No, we won't need that. You can stow that inside the bag. Okay. For both of your awareness, a couple more minutes here. Um, and then we'll be able to get moving again. Do a good job getting a little bit ahead on the crew lock back. Perfect. I'm not sure which you hear the area call, but uh, we are set up and ready for maneuver to tennis hall position. Okay, sounds great, full time. You are, go. Okay, copy, go. 
since this is a published position, would he, you also have an option of assisting closing, keeping IROSA in a closed configuration? So stopping it from unfolding while Woody, or while Steve, excuse me, addresses that loose grounding pin. That sounds like a great idea, James. Let me get in position and then we can do exactly that. I just need to push on that side here, so. We're stopping mostly now. Copy, Sultan. Okay, Steve. Hi. Yeah, I've got our roaster. Ah, I didn't hit that with the ground and said, enjoy. Oh, I can bend my arms again. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to hear it, Steve. You should be able to see a little uh, receiving area for the pin. It should be near where the pin is loose. You just need to reinstall it. I head down to the base of the bit strut. This is the strut. You should not have to translate far, Steve. You should be in a good spot to see it. Where is it? It is at the base of the mounting bracket itself, where where it meets the oh, left base strut. Right. Where it meets the left strut. Right, so I see these two pins here. Another one? Yep, there is another one that is not installed. Oh, that's uh, the, not in. Yes, the second one that you touched is not in. So we need you to reinstall that. For here. That's right. Thanks, Steve. All right, give you one second. All right, take that in. Good pull. All right, great job, Steve. We are good to continue with the procedure. We understand the arm is in a uh, its final position. So, Steve, we need you to hold IROSA in a closed configuration, and Woody, you can place that fairly. All right, give me one second. I got my hook back in place. All right, thanks for the break. Woody, I've got it now. I have the other one. Copy, you've got it. Big picture call for all crew. We are headed into a region of spotty calm, followed by an LOS. That total time is six minutes. You are go to continue with IROSA unfold. Frank, we are in block nine, step 2627. Frank, you are prime IV. Jams, we copy block nine, step 2627. We are go to continue with unfold. We are prime. A firm, once you have completed with the unfold, we will have you move to the cable mate block, that is block 10. With the space station's robotic arm backed away and in a safe configuration, the crew will now proceed with unfolding the IROSA. Good words. We are in a brief but expected handover period, and we'll get uh, views of the space station back shortly.
The first working eclipse is about three and a half minutes away from now, and that is the first targeted window to mate the cables. So after they unfold the irosa, they will move ahead to that step. You're, uh... Okay, now it's starting to clear your PGT. You're almost there. There you go, you're clear. Looks good. Happy to you, thanks. Installed. Let me just take a quick look at my tethers. Absolutely. And then we'll get into unfold. Okay. One more thing to fix, and then I'll be ready, Steve. Frank, this is ground. We're coming up on that LOS. When you get there, we will need you to confirm safing for the working eclipse. And Jenny, we copy. We will need to confirm safing, and that'll be two minutes. Good words. Okay, Steve. All right. I think we're ready, Frank. Okay, guys, uh, this is going to be a warning for you both. There's a pinch point, so keep clear of the rotating Irosa. Has Steve verified that, uh, or would he verify that you've cycled the right soft capture feature? I'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, thanks, Woody. And then just uh, make sure that you leave it in the soft capture feature down position. Frank. Okay, then uh, again, keeping in mind the pinch point, Steve, go ahead and slowly pivot Irosa to unfolded. Woody, engage the right side alignment guide Perfect. and slot. You can hear a conversation between NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, who is on board the space station and currently serving as the prime IV, or communication link between the spacewalkers. All right, nice job, guys. And so what do you then go ahead and verify the soft capture feature is properly engaged? Uh, so I have control and we're still rotating. Thanks, Frank. Today's spacewalkers are NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg, and they are currently working to unfold the IROSA or International Space Station Rollout Solar Array. Once it is unfolded, they will verify soft capture is properly engaged, and then they will perform some glove inspections and hap checks before moving on to cable mating. Okay, great job, guys. I uh, need you both to perform a glove, hap, and gauntlet check, and then we'll start moving towards our cable mating positions. Okay, Frank. EB-1 has no change to gloves, dry hap, and gauntlets down. Yep, I agree. EB-1 does have... Yeah, sorry, Steve. EB-2. Gloves, dry hap, and gauntlets are down. That's correct, EBA. The first working eclipse window has started, and there's about 30 minutes for them to complete the cable mating process. Position for R8 and R7 there, Frank. Okay, copy that. Uh, good job, guys. And just to let you know, at this point, the hardware meets minimum structural config for mating cables. Actually, yeah, so why don't we, why don't we get into that? Over here. Yeah, yeah three measurements. Hey, Steve. Never mind, I go. All right, so, Frank, we have the caps, the NVGL caps. We're ready to demate those on your go. Okay, you can uh, demate the NVGL caps uh, from P1, P2, P3, and P4. 
It works. That's it. Evie and Ivy crew, Houston, our last little bit of calm here. We can confirm our safing is in place and we are in our eclipse condition. So you are go for the eclipse required cables. Copy, go, thanks Jams. And do you guys have a time for when our window ends? You have 28 minutes. We'll be back with you by then, and as an additional reminder, you'll need to complete the NZGLs before you move to the Eclipse required cables. And we are decapping the NZGA caps now. These are pretty sticky. They are. Okay, guys, once you have the caps off, not even close. Steve, you're going to be mating T1, T2, J1, and J2. Stand by, Frank. We still have any of the caps off. Both Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen are now working to electrically connect the new IROSA or ISS rollout solar array to the space station's power system. Yep, I understand. Those things can be a bear. Okay, I think I got one. That was a trick. Got the lever, I still don't have the cap off. Okay, got, got one. Wow. As they work through the cable mating process, they'll first attach four connectors to the IROSA, and then both of them will move to either side of the legacy array to disconnect the old array and connect a Y cable. This will allow power to flow from both the new IROSA and the old legacy array to the space station's power system. We are about two hours and 53 minutes into today's spacewalk, and we are about six minutes away from um, getting signal back from the space station. Today's spacewalk officially started at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 9.25 a.m. Eastern Time, when the spacewalkers switched their uh, spacesuits to battery power. Steve Bowen, who is EV-1 with red stripes, egressed the crew lock first and received a crew lock bag and put it on his body restraint tether. He was then followed shortly by EV-2, or Woody Hoberg, who is in the unmarked suit. They then translated up the forward face of the truss and went starboard. Steve Bowen stopped to configure his safety tethers, and then Woody Hoberg followed a similar path going to the port crew equipment transla translation aid cart and retrieved an articulating portable foot restraint. Bowen then translated to the IROSA carrier and retrieved his pistol grip tool and began preparing IROSA for rem removal from the carrier. Hoberg installed the foot restraint on the space station's robotic arm, ingressed the restraint, and then the arm moved him away from the truss. Both Bowen and Hoberg then worked to release a series of bolts, um, both restraint bolts and anti-rotation devices. Once those bolts were released, they installed the first of two handling aids called scoops in preparation for removing IROSA from the carrier. Once they installed the second scoop, uh, Hoberg lifted the IROSA off of its carrier, and then after several maneuvers on the robotic arm, he arrived at the 1A mod kit worksite. 
During these robotic arm maneuvers, Bowen worked to make his way over to the mod kit site where they met to install the IROSA onto the 1A mounting bracket. More recently, the crew uh, unfolded the IROSA and are now working to mate the cables. Once the crew members finish connect electrically connecting the new IROS of the space station's power system, they will work to drive some hinge bolts. These, these bolts will help to uh, fully secure IROSA to the mounting bracket before unfurling it. Here in the room, we have Flight Director Diane Daly, who you can see uh, in the middle of your screen. And next to her is the Prime Ground IV, Jenny Gibbons. Also in the room, we have our EVA Flight Controller, who is Megan Shudika today. Good words, Woody. And Steve, you're going to be disconnecting SAW Papa 7 from panel Papa 7 and SAW Papa 2-1 from panel Papa 2-1. All right, so you 7 and G 21 2 lower. Houston's Denver back with you panel. with a correction. Great job, you guys. We had some spotty shot SS there, so we could hear you. You did a great job. We just want to confirm you're doing each cable one at a time. I don't mind which one you start with. Just tell me which one you're going to start with, but only demate one cable from the panel at a time. Okay. Where did you go? Did you go, Woody? I'm ready. Standing by. All right. I'm going to do P21 first. Okay. Let's do Frank, you ready for me to take back over? Copy, Cam. You are prime. Got it. I'm prime IV. Great job. All right. 
I copy your P21 ready. P21 is disconnected. That's P21 disconnected from panel P21. I agree. That is true. All right. Mate P21 Alpha to panel P21. I need fraud pins EMI check, and the connector needs to be to hard stop. Okay. P21 Alpha is in my hand. And yeah. I'm standing by a jam. Woody, you have a go to continue. We just need one cable on each side at a time. Clarification for you. So tell me if you want to start with P9 or P23. Okay, I've got panel P9 demating. Here go. That's demated. Mate P9 alpha to panel P9. I need FOD pins EMI check and the connector to hard stop. Copy, Jams. Okay, P9 Alpha, channel P9, no vent pins, no fired, good EMI band. Copy, good checks, your go. All right, P21 Alpha is made to P21 panel. That was good EMI band, no fired, good pins. Copy, good mate, Steve. Confirm the connector is to hard stop. And the connector is to hard stop. Great work. You can move on to J21 Alpha, made it to saw cable P21. All right, that's been work. And Jams, I have P9, the panel, hard stop. Copy, that's a good mate, Woody. You can move on to J9 Alpha, mated to saw cable P9. J9 Alpha, saw cable P9. I have no bent pins, no FOD. <laughs> and good EMI band. All right, I have. Go, Woody. P21, J21 Alpha, with good pins, no FOD, and good EMI band, and that's connected. Copy, Steve. That is a good mate. You can move on to disconnecting saw cable P7 from panel P7. All right. Saw cable P7 from panel P7. You can now see live views of NASA astronaut Steve Bowen working to mate and demate some cables on the IROSA. Okay, Jams, saw P9 to J9 Alpha connector, or uh, saw connector hard stop. Ready for panel P23. Good words, Woody. Move on to disconnecting saw cable P23 from panel P23. You made it. No vent pins. Alright. You made it. No good pins, no fog. Installing J7, P7 Alpha. Copy Steve and copy your checks. A firm mate P7 Alpha to panel P7. I have P23 Alpha. Made it to panel P23, no fraud, no bent pins, good EMI band. Copy, confirm it's to connector hard stop. A firm. Connect J23 Alpha to saw cable P23. Work.
ground cable P23 to J23 Alpha, no vent pits, no flood, good EMI band, things have connector hard stuff. Copy, Woody, that is a good mate, and I track that that is your last connection for this side. Verify the connector config is as expected and clean up the remaining cable slack as required. Okay, that's going to work. Thanks, James. All right, now we're getting this little line. Okay, and and Woody, we were tracking that your hand did touch a connector P24. We just want to make sure that that is still to hard stop. Good catch, and I, uh, you are correctly moved, but it's back at hard stop. And I'm going to check P10 while I'm... I can confirm all four panel connector hard stop. Copy, Woody, we agree. Woody and Steve, you're both doing great. We have over 12 minutes left of this working eclipse. Hey, James, I think the cables on the right side are looking to be in a good config. About one wire side located. Keep them secure. We agree. All right, finally, P7 Alpha, raise the P7. Great job. Steve, uh, you can move on to... to hard stop. Copy to hard stop. You can move on to connecting J7 Alpha to saw cable P7. And that's been work. Woody, we agree your worksite is in a good config. Uh, we will have a glove inspection, half check, and gauntlet check for you before you translate to R7 and 8. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is currently working to connect the last cable. Once it is connected, he will verify that all the connect connectors are configured as expected and clean up any remaining cable slack. J7 Alpha made it to P7. No bent pins, no fog, and to a hard stop. Copy, excellent work, Steve. That is a good mate. You can verify that your connector config is as expected and clean up any remaining cable slack. All right, I see all look. Touch the hard stop and I'm not sure how bad this is. Do you want this flush against the um checking? I think it looks not too bad. Let me put this on the end rail will be good. We're taking a look, and it looks like you're in a good config, Steve. We're happy with that. Thank you. Jams, no change to gloves. I have. Copy, Witty, and you cut out there. Did you say gauntlets down? 
Hey, firm. That looks down. Copy. Good checks from Woody. All right. I think that's going to do it. Woody, you can translate to the hinge bolts. Copy, Jim. Thanks. A caution for you, Woody. You should avoid contact with the cables and NZGL connectors, which are now attached to IROSA. I know it's tricky at this work site. You can hold on to the bolt canisters that are on either side of the NZGL connectors. Okay, great. Yep, I see those. I can copy all jams. Steve, again, we're happy with your work site. This is the end of our Eclipse requirements for this uh, EVA, so great work to both of you. I need a glove inspection, hap check, and gauntlet check from Steve. Okay, let me fly out past the cables back to the front of the... All of the cables have been successfully connected. This will now allow power to flow from both the new IROSA and the old legacy array to the space station's power system. Okay, jams. Settings. Alpha one, clockwise two. Steve, your job at this time is to provide extra stability to Woody because he might not have much to hold on to when he drives these bolts. Hold on to me, Woody. I can hold on to you. Yeah, I copy, Steve. Uh, All right. Tell me if you need it. Let's see how we're doing here. Yep. All right. Alpha 1, clockwise 2 is set. Good settings. Drive the hinge bolts 14 to 17 turns to hard stop. 14 to NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is now working to drive two hinge bolts into IROSA while it's in the unfolded position. The crew will then work together to drive eight bolts to fully secure IROSA to the mounting bracket. I got 17 and a half turns, green light, two decimal four foot pounds on R7. Copy R7, 17 and a half turns, green light, two decimal four on the torque. Driving R8. Here you go. Woody Hoberg is now driving the second of the two hinge bolts, and then Steve Bowen will work to drive the eight bolts to fully secure IROSA to the mounting bracket. Once that's complete, Steve Bowen will move to a deployment viewing position, and Woody Hoberg will release the final two bolts holding IROSA in an undeployed position, and then IROSA will deploy over the next six to ten minutes. And jams are eight. 17 decimal two five turns and two decimal three foot pounds green light. 17 decimal two five turns, two decimal three on the torque and a green light. That is a good R8. 
we have a go for you to use the AMS knob as a delta to the procedure as requested. So at this time you can stow your PGT and we will have you loosen each hinge bolt one turn and then finger tight less than one turn on R7 and R8. Okay, James, understand all work. Woody, after this is complete, or excuse me, Steve, after this is complete, you will be stowing the AMS knob in the crew lock bag. Got it right here, Steve. Stay at least. Just get a rep for you. I'll hand it to you. There you go. I'll hand you your rep back. And I have my rep. Thanks. All right, Jams. R7, R8, finger tight. Copy, Woody. We are happy with that. Uh, your next step is to complete your tether swap. So we will have you translate back inboard to the arm. You might have to GCA from the tether swap position if it's required. I'll let you work with Frank and Sultan for that. Steve, you are going to drive M bolts on the bottom of the mounting bracket. All right, let me install the AMS knob and then I'll ready to do that. And James, I copy all. I'll be picking up my fair lead and going back for tether swap. Good words. All right, and let's go back on the catch, Copy, Steve. For Steve and Woody. Okay, verifying there's no preferred order on the envelopes, correct? No preferred order. You can start with whichever one you want first. Let me know when you want settings. Okay, you know what settings? And Steve, for your awareness, we are tracking that M34 had one turn hand started on it. If you started any other bolt, just let us know. All right, and so the first one is M21, is that correct? Right underneath the uh, stanchion. M31. Yeah, so I started that here as well with one turn. And James, I started a few as well, so Steve can call them out. The I'll call them. I can see which ones they are. Yeah. Okay. That works well for us. All right. I copy the M31 already has one turn on it. Steve, your settings are Bravo 5, clockwise 2. Bravo 5, clockwise 2. Go to do a quick cow. Good lights. And 39.9 volts. And so you got the settings again, Jenny? Bravo 5, clockwise 2. We have Bravo 5, clockwise 2. You'll be driving these bolts such that the black line is flush. It'll be to torque. Expect 11 to 14 turns. 
at the 1114 Terrence Plus and Tito. Good words. For both of you, we are three hours and 20 minutes into this EVA, tracking a time of seven hours and 30 minutes. Limiting consumable is Woody's battery, and we are around 45 minutes ahead of timeline. Great job. Uh, M31. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen, who is EV1 today, is currently working to drive the eight bolts to fully secure IROSA to the mounting bracket. Torque of 22, seven turns, green light, and was that a black line flush call? And there's a black line flush to the uh, uh, yes. And my green reel is locked to my red reel, picking up my yellow hook. Copy. That'll end up on your green reel locked. I'll take your checks. You are currently seeing views from NASA astronaut Woody, uh, Woody Hoberg's helmet cam. He is working to swap some tethers. That's a good configuration. Okay, and I think my next thing is to reposition APFR to clocking six. Good words. He's now about to start working on repositioning the articulating portable foot restraint on the robotic arm. You can both see it here, but we're heading. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Steve Bowen continues to work on driving the final eight bolts. Okay, looks like M32, 33, and 34 all hands started. We copy. And verifying settings, Bravo 5, clockwise 2. Good words. And M32 is in work. Copy, M32, drive until black line flush to torque. And spray APFR. Go. Okay, repositioned, talking six, Papa Papa, Fox six, which now can to be depressed, good pull shift test, collar is black on black, and it, ingress aid is low profile. Copy. Good install, Woody. You can give M1 a go for the IEA back off, and we will have you translate back to the mounting bracket. All right. All right. Good green light, 1.31 turns, and torque of 21.1 for M31 and M32. Copy. That is a good bolt for M32. You can move on to M33. That didn't work. You're seeing live views of Steve Bowen working to drive the final eight bolts. He is currently on the third of eight. And we, we copy that all the tethers have been removed from the AP, and the APFR reconfigured and ready to uh, move it to the park uh, position. Brakes are coming off. Copy, brakes off. Keep on behind to your right. All right, I got a quick green light. Got uh, 11.4 turns, 21.4 foot pounds on 33. Happy Steve, that's a good bolt for M33. We'll have you move on to the next one. All right, M34 is in work. 
Copy, M34. Green lights. One point one, oh, one point five pounds. Uh, I mean, one point five turns at twenty two point zero per pound. And Steve, I copy green light, and that bolt is driven. But I need you to read back the torque and the turns you cut out. Torque was twenty two point zero. Turns was eleven point five. Even with the arm is starting motion. Copy, Sultan. Copy, that's a good bolt, Steve. All right. You can move on. M35 has not hand started. Okay, copy, M35 has not been hand started. You have the same settings. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is now halfway through installing the eight uh, mounting bracket bolts. He has four to go and has completed four of them. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is currently translating over to the mounting bracket. Back of the green light. The sun is my eyes. And Steve, you turn at 22.0 for pounds. Yes, Woody? Is it useful for me to socket swap and help drive these? Or sure, why don't you just click my PGT and you can swap three. Otherwise, I'd have to head over your side. Yeah, absolutely. I can do that. We're okay with you doing that, but Steve, say again the number of turns for M35. 12. Copy, 12.2, that is a good bolt. Then if you transfer your PGT to Woody, we can drive the remaining bolts. We're looking for M36 through 38. That should be Bravo 5. Let me pass it back under here. Okay. They got it. I got it. Okay. So I've just got to get in position. No, that's fine. And Stephen, Woody, I will be in motion. Copy, Sultan. Okay. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen just handed off the pistol group grip tool to Woody Hoberg, who's going to help him drive the final three bolts. Got. I got 26 decimal 29 turns, green light, 21 decimal 9 foot pounds. Hey, you must have gone back out, that's double. So subtract the turn oh, okay. ready from uh, the last bolt. We're just checking on that bolt. By my memory, that's uh, 14 turns and a good green light and good torque. It's a good bolt. We can move on. That was M36. We're ready to move on to 37 and 38. I'm in a good spot. Let's okay. Let me cycle this out because I bumped it. Okay. Bravo. 
five clockwise to a seven. Good setting. Back to zero. Yep. Great. Right. 37, 20, correction, 12 decimal 5 turns, green light, 21 decimal 9 foot pass. Good bolts, you can move on to M38. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is now working to drive the final of the eight bolts to fully secure the International Space Station rollout solar array to the mounting bracket. After that's complete, EV-1 or Steve Bowen will move to a deployment viewing position while EV-2, who is Woody Hoberg, will release the final two bolts holding IROSA in an undeployed position. Trying to find a position where I'm not sideloading the bolt. <laughs> We copy. That's why that one's so awkward. This one's a little awkward. Let's yeah, see. I think you end up sliding a little tight, tight a little bit. We're good. I see it. Okay, we're Okay, M38, we had 11 decimal 9 three turns, green light, 22 decimal 2 foot pounds. Here you go, Steve. Well, I'm going to play hands off here. Thank you. We copy, Woody. Uh, that is a good bolt. We just need the confirmation the black line is flush because we cannot see it in your HECA. Yep, black line flush. Trying to point out it. Copy. Great work. We are complete with our M bolts. Uh, Steve, you can stow your PTT, and we'll have you positioned to observe the first five magnets snap together when we deploy. Uh, Woody, you need to get in position on the base of the mounting bracket for R9 and R10. Okay. Getting in position for R9, R10. And I'm getting in position to watch. Super. Good words. Woody, as a reminder, this is a Bravo 7 setting. You can use the scoop on the base of the mounting bracket to brace yourself. All right, I see that. Thank you. I am in a good position. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. Happy Steve. Steve, agree you're in a good position. Woody, I see your PGT out. 
warning for both of you prior to releasing the deployment launch restraint bolts. Position to stay clear of deploying our rows of blankets. You will both be in a good position. All right, that sounds great, Jan. So I got Bravo 7. I need a reminder. Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Bravo 7, counter 2, and I'll have you hold here, Woody. Okay, copy that. Bravo 7, counter 2 is set. All right, I'm going to get position. Good words. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is standing by to release the final two bolts holding the ISS rollout solar array in an undeployed position. You are going to release R9 and R10. The white line will appear when they are fully released. Expect 17 to 20 turns. IROSA will deploy after the second bolt is released. All right, I copy. Starting with R9. Once the, these final two bolts are released, the IROSA will deploy over the next six to ten minutes. To give us a better view. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to do that without falling off the edge of station here. Copy, we understand. That looks great. Hold on, I'm lost, lost my position. White line visible, I counted 17 turns on R9. Copy, 17 turns on R9. Stand, continue to stand by, Woody. The first of two restraint bolts has been fully released. Hold on. That last adjustment, I just couldn't stop it there. How's that? Is that better? I need to speed up a little bit. Steve, we know it's tough. There's not much to hold on to out there. I'm trying to get you some hold additional on. words. Try a different position. Steve, as long as as long as you can see, we'll be comfortable with it. Heck is desired, but your eyes are enough for us. All right, well, try this one. Happy. I have that. All right, great work. Steve, if you are in a stable position, we're happy with your view. Woody, you are go to release R10. turns down.
30 seconds to a short handover. I count 20 turns so far. I'm going to continue. You might have to wiggle it, Woody. Gotcha. There it goes. The second of the two restraint bolts has been fully released, and IROSA will begin deploying over the next six to ten minutes. Short handover. Copy. We are now in a brief but expected handover period, and we'll regain signal of those beautiful views of the space station in about ten seconds. All right, Houston's back with you. Welcome back. Woody, you are staying exactly where you are. Well done on the final bolt to release Irosa, and Steve will take your report. All right, looks good. Looks like it's stretching out nicely, and uh, everything seems to be lining up. How does it look to you? You have a good view now. Copy, we don't have video back yet, but we will shortly. We appreciate the words. All right, I'll stand by. We have our video back. Everything is looking great. I have two cautions for you, Woody. You can now see live views of the International Space Station Rollout Solar Array as it begins to unfurl as the space station flies over the coast of uh, the southwest United States. This is five less than before. Okay, I copy. Thank you. I'll be cautious. Sounds good to us. Everything's looking really good to us. Again, well done, you two. Woody, again, you have to stay put, but Steve, you can get moving if you want to. We're still well ahead of schedule, so uh, you can stay and look a little longer if you prefer it, but your next step is to pick up your green hook. All right, I'm going to head back and pick up my green hook. Yeah. Copy. Woody, if we can, we'd love to adjust your heck of you a little bit. If you could pitch back at all for us, we'd appreciate it. Yep, you got it. Thank you. Woody Hoberg is continuing to monitor the IROSA as it deploys. Meanwhile, uh, Steve Bowen is translating back to the IROSA carrier to reconfigure the carrier beams that previously held the upright IROSA. These beams will need to be rotated out of the way to allow access to the lower IROSA, which will be installed on next week's EVA on June 15th. Copy, Steve. Sounds great. 
Once fully deployed, the IROSA, or International Space Station, rollout solar array will measure 60 feet long by 20 feet wide and will shade a little more than half of the original array. Each new IROSA will produce more than 20 kilowatts of electricity and once installed will enable a 30% increase in power production over the, over the station's current arrays. Hopefully those came out, we'll see. Copy. Steve, whenever you're ready, you're headed to the FSC. Heading to the FSC. Well, on my way. Copy. I have more questions and warnings for you when you're ready. All right, give me one second, clear this. I'll be ready. Let me know. All right, I'm ready to copy. Steve, warning and a reminder, grapple shafts and curvet coupling are no touch zones. No sudden movements, quick grabs on the FSE. Wait until motion dampens out before imparting loads on the FSE. Don't simultaneously impart loads into the FSE. This is for when Woody is also ready to translate. And do not contact the IROSA blanket. Copy. And I copy all. The International Space Station Rollout Solar Array, or IROSA, continues deploy to deploy on the Starboard 4 truss connected to the 1A power channel of the space station as the space station flies over South Dakota. I do not have a fair lead listed for you, Steve, and no green hook drop. Let me just confirm. All right, that's fine. Yeah, I can confirm that now, Steve. Um, there is no action for a fair lead or green hook drop. You are just translating directly onto the FSE from the port CETA cart. So do not take the POA path. Do not take the POA path. Okay, for a different path than last time. Good view there, Jenny. Hey, firm. Uh, I think my first bolts are C7C8, correct? Hey, firm, that's right. You're going to be at Stanchion Alpha, and this is a Bravo 7 setting, so you might need to get in a better brace position. All right, the center works. Copy, let me know when you're ready for settings.
Woody, we are nearly complete. More words for you in a minute. Okay, thank you. Currently for settings for C7, C8. Bravo 7, counter 2. Bravo 7, counter 2. Good readback. You'll be releasing C7 and C8. Expect 8 to 11 turns. 8 to 11 turns, C7, C8. Good words. Here comes C7. Hey, James, it looks to me like motion is stopped. Yep, we're just double checking that we can confirm a good deploy, Woody. What would help us is if you could confirm the bottom five magnets on both booms. We don't need a heck of you, we just need you to see that the magnets have snapped together. Okay. So 1.5 and C7 is popped out, moving to C8. Copy C7 released, you go for C8. And James, I'm thinking I might need to move to see those. Do you agree with that, or am I missing something? Magnets. Hey, Firm Woody, you will have to move, and you're going to translate right now. Right now, you're seeing views of NASA astronaut Steve Bowen as he works to release the beam restraint bolts. He has already released one of them and has a couple more to go. Copy C8 is released. Steve, stow your PGT and translate to Stanchion Bravo. Translate to Stanchion Bravo. Steve, a delta to your plan. We'll have you continue translation past Stanchion Bravo to Stanchion Charlie because we have enough time for a small efficiency here. Okay, go Charlie. Jenny, yeah, I do see that first five magnets on the right side engaged. Copy, Woody, that sounds good. And left side, I see it as well. Copy, thank you, Woody. With that, we can release the blanket tensioner bolts, R11 and R12 on the ISS inboard side of IROSA. Okay, 11 and 12, Alpha 1, Alpha counter 2. Alpha 1, counter 2. A successful deployment of the International Space Station Rollout Solar Array, or IROSA, has been confirmed as the space station flies over Quebec, Canada. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is now working to release blanket tensioner bolts. After he releases these two bolts, it will allow the IROSA blankets to become tensioned. 
Good settings. Thank you, Jan. Starting with R11. Copy, R11. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is working on a get-ahead task to release uh, some additional beam restraint bolts. Okay, that's Branson Bravo. What would you like? Retrieve the pit pin from the stowage location, push the C1 bolt into the can, and install that pit pin. Of course, I thought you Charlie. Hey, Charlie, right? Bypass Bravo? A firm, you should be at Sanction Charlie. Give me back to Bravo. Thank you. Since I got five turns on R11, it popped out with a white band, and I saw the tension on the array. Copy, five turns, R11 released. You can move on to R12. Starting turns. About four turns on R12. I saw the tension. Got the good white band at the bottom of R12. Copy, R12 fully released. You can stow your PGT and verify all the MLI on the mod kit is in place. We want no metal struts or collar bolts showing. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg just released both of the tensioner bolts um, that allowed the IROSA blankets to become tensioned. He's now going to work uh, work on cleaning up the mod kit worksite. I would not describe the bolt as having popped out. Is that expected? We're checking, Woody. Thanks for the go back. And the pit pen is installed in Charlie 1. Copy, Steve. Your next step is to release Charlie 4 and Charlie 3, so two initial beam, additional beam bolts. This is a Bravo 7 setting, so I'll let you get in position. All right, give me a second. All right, Woody, I can confirm that we are happy with. We are happy with both R11 and R12, so we need you to verify all the MLI on the mod kit is in place. Copy all of that's in work. Right, strut, right side is looking good. Copy right side. Right. Bravo seven. Counterclockwise two. A firm, Bravo seven, counter two. You will be releasing these bolts. Expect eight to eleven turns. Right. Okay, with Charlie four. Copy Charlie four. Charlie 4 is done. But, uh, all turns. Copy, Charlie 4. Charlie 3. Charlie 4 is released. I need you to repeat the turn count. It was 12. I let it run a little bit longer than if I needed to. Copy. You can continue on to Charlie 3. Charlie 3 is in work. Again, the MLI is looking good. I need another couple spots, and I'm ready to retrieve the scoop. Right. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is now working to release the second of two uh, 
beam restraint bolts in his get ahead task. Copy, Charlie 3 released Steve. You can stow your PGT and we'll have you translate to Stension Bravo. Go back to Bravo. Woody, power your HECA on. All right, and Woody, we are happy with the uh, MRI current config, and we do not need a HECA scan. So you're exactly right. You can remove the square scoop from the mounting bracket along with the adjustable tethers and stow it in the crew lock bag. Uh, you can close up this crew lock bag and stow it on your BRT. Copy all. In work. And we do not need a crew lock bag inventory. Lucky you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Copy, Steve. You will be retrieving the pit pin from the stowage location and stowing the C2 bolt. All right, pit pin, Charlie 2. Good words. Pin pin Charlie 2 is installed. Copy, pit pin installed on Charlie 2. Uh, we need you to connect a RET to the adjustable equipment tether D ring from to the adjustable equipment tether D ring to the beam handrail stanchion. Understand, get my adjustable ready to attach the stanchion. Okay, that'll be in work. Okay, copy. Alright, just to be clear, Jane, you want the RET attached to me or to something else? There should be a RET to an adjustable equipment tether D-ring, and that adjustable equipment tether hook should be on the closest beam handrail stanchion to you. So you have an adjustable attached to the sure. beam and the D-ring attached to a RET, and that RET is on your mini workstation. That's what I needed to hear. Okay. And I got an adjustable one hook going to Samson. Configure all my other adjustable. 
copy, Steve. We're going to have you hold here. We're going to get Steve on the SSC with you, and then we will move forward with our beam release. All right. We're waiting on I'm good. <laughs> yeah. We will have you get your piece. I don't know if it's that much, so. <laughs> All right. We'll have you get your PCT out. We're not releasing any bolts yet. Again, we're waiting um, to do that. But this will be a Bravo 7 setting to release Charlie 5 and Charlie 6, so you can get ready for that. You have some time. Woody, you yes, I'm transporting, translating inboard. A firm, I was about to tell you. Your next step is to press the starboard CETA cart brake release, and then you will be translating to the port CETA cart. All right, you got it. While you're translating, Woody, I have big picture words for both of you. Yes, do I need both brakes or just one of the two on each seat of cart? I'll get them both. <laughs> you can get both. We I just confirmed you need one of the two on both seat of carts. Just took us a minute. Okay, copy. Thanks. There's the track on the starboard side. Copy. Woody, you are going to be dropping your green hook on S3 handrail 3011 and then stowing crew lock bag M on 3217. 011 and 3217. Okay, thanks, James. Good read back. Let me know when you're ready for those big picture words. I'm ready. Okay. We are now four hours into this seven hour, 30 minute EVA. Limiting consumable has not changed. That is the battery on Woody, and we are still one hour ahead of timeline. Obviously, we've deployed IROSA, so great job to you both. We are getting um, to the point where we are going to stow the FSE beams and uh, remove that FOD. If we have time, we're gonna do some get aheads and release the ARDs for the next EVA. That sounds real good. Thanks, James. Okay, I found 3011. That was my green hook location, correct? A firm. Copy. And then 3217 for the bag, got it. Go ahead and
Alright, Jams, I'm ready to go up onto the FSE. Copy, ensure you go via the POA path, fair lead on MBS handrail 8400. 8400. I'll do that. A firm? Yeah, I'm looking for it. Right now you're seeing views from NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg's helmet camera. He is working to translate over to the carrier beam uh, where NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is currently. Once they're both over there, the crew members will work together to release the bolts holding the beams in place and then they will rotate them out of the way and secure them back down. The spacewalkers continue to remain about an hour ahead of schedule. After they release the beam, um, there's a couple of get ahead tasks that they can work on prior to ingress. All right, am I heading to Alpha? Yeah. Hey, firm. So Steve and my tethers will, that should be okay. Looks good. Hey, firm. Woody, your next step is to perform a socket swap. Steve was able to already release C3 and C4, so we'll just take the socket swap and then move on to rotating the beam. Okay, copy socket swap. Now, I will need a socket caddy to do this, correct? You only have, oh no, it's just yeah, I have an extra pit pin right. A firm, you're gonna use your pit pin, so you, you'll remove the six inch wobble from your uh, PGT and sew it in your trash bag with the pit pin, and the two inch that's currently, I believe, in your trash bag will be stowed on the PGT. Thank you all. And say, do you want to release one of the C5 or C6? A firm, Steve, you can release either one. Bravo 7, counter 2 are your settings. Bravo 7, cut up clockwise to you. Good words. System work. That's complete. And I got eleven turns. Copy eleven turns, and that was C six. Copy, we'll hold here. I agree.
Okay, Jenny, I've got the 5 eighths 2 inch rigid on the PGT. Copy, I'll take a pull test. All right, already complete. Okay. So when Steve releases this final bolt, C5, uh, Steve, you will rotate the zenith end of the beam toward Woody. Understand. And you'll be temp stowing the beam in the stowage location, which is parallel to the blankets with the handrails facing the POA. You'll need two adjustable equipment tethers to do this. Okay, and would you have an adjustable available quickly? Yes. Okay, we'll be ready to go. All right, we are go when you are ready. All right, please and see five. Copy C5. Retrieving my adjustable. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen just released the final beam restraint bolt. Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg will now work together uh, to rotate the beams out of the way and secure them back down. Disregard. Sorry. Where they These carrier beams were being reconfigured. They previously held the upright Arosa, and they needed to be rotated out of the way to allow access to the lower Irosa, which will be installed on next week's EVA, EVA on June 15th. Okay. I've got an adjustable on it. I can cinch this side. We won't cinch it down, but when you get yours on there, we come back, we'll cinch them down, make them snug. Houston concurs, that's correct. And this is going to 0012. Copy, and Steve's exactly right. We'll cinch this down later on. What we need to make sure of right now is that the beam is clear of the Nader upper support beam, so that's the one by you, Woody. It's clear. That, I had no interference there. Copy. Uh, Steve, you can release your RET. I understand that the beam is tethered via two adjustables. All right, I'm releasing my RET. A caution for both of you. On my side. Copy. A caution for both of you. Now that this beam is tied down, do not exceed 30 foot-pounds on the temp load beam. And again, a reminder for the FSE, we don't want to simultaneously impart loads into it, so we will alternate if we need to translate around the same time. Copy. Copy. We are in another brief but expected handover period and we'll regain signal shortly. Houston's back with you after a short handover. We will need Woody to translate to stanchion Delta 
and Steve will need to translate to Stanch and Charlie. But again, please alternate your translations. Okay. What are you ready to go? I am ready to go. Then go ahead and tell me when you're there. Okay, go into Delta. Good words. Woody, once you're there, you'll attach a mini workstation RET to the closest beam handrail stanchion. Copy. I'm at Delta putting that mini workstation threat in work. All right, I'm going to start my translation. Copy both. Sounds great, Steve. Mini workstation read is down. Woody? Once you have that ret down, you'll be readying your PGT. Thanks, Jams. All right, Woody. Be my uh, PCT setting when that swings over here. So that was for Woody. Okay. Then your setting is Bravo Seven Counter Two. Bravo Seven Counter Two is set. Right. And when it gets here, what will it be? It'll all drive the twenty turns. It'll also be Bravo Seven. You'll just be clockwise two oh, for seven. clockwise for Steve. Okay, understand. And I'm ready to drive C9. Copy. You're releasing C9. Expect 8 to 11 turns. Copy and work. I counted nine and a half and it popped out. Ready for C10. Copy. C9 released. Your go for C10. About a minute until a short handover. Copy. Starting train C10. C10 popped out, 9 turns. Blood check. Copy, 9 turns, C10 Blood popped out. You'll be rotating the beam toward Steve. Copy. Ready, Steve? Yep. Coming at you. Short hand over. I got it. Copy, you got it. I'm, uh, About one turn. Delta two. Half copy. Yes, I'm good. Pull the 20, right? Yeah, I recall Bravo 7, clockwise 2, for no more than 20. No more than 20. Houston's back with you. Stop on turns. 
Houston's back with you. I copy your hand start. I concur. Bravo seven, clockwise two, and this will be approximately 20 turns. Copy, GMs, but we are going to stop on turns. A firm, let's do that's 20, 20 turns only. Okay, copy. Starting C9. Copy C9. And I'm stopping there. It's getting kind of close to the bottom. I got uh, 17 turns plus the two that puts me at 19 turns. Is that okay? Or C7. Checking. C9, I got. I put in 18 turns plus two hand starts. Copy, 18 turns on C9 plus two hand turns. We're checking. Steve, we want more turns on your bolts. Let's hit it again at the same settings. All right, how many more do you want? Only one turn. All right, that's it. Complete. I have 20 turns, 21, yeah, 20 turns. Copy, Steve, stand by. We're still discussing. We're, We're still discussing that config on the ground. We might have more action here. Woody, your bolt is good. Okay, I copy. Thanks, James. What's different about your bolt? All right, Steve, because we charged out on this bolt, we need to back it out one turn. Your settings are Bravo 7. Did not torque out on this bolt. Did not torque out on this bolt. Got a low torque. Okay. We misunderstood then. I got 18 points. You can see I have a red light for not reaching torque. Hey, uh, Steve, wait one. I'm trying to get word from Houston here. They, uh, I think we came up on a handover quicker than they expected. Hey, okay. this is Houston. We hit a patch of ratty calm. We are good on that bolt, Steve. So at this time, I'm handing over to Frank. Frank, you are prime IV. We are one minute away from a five-minute LOS. Hey, I copy. I am Prime IV, and can you just verify what step you're on in Block 12? Block 12, pick up in Step 32 for Woody and 37 for Steve, and Nick passed you the additional instructions. Copy 32 and 37. Thanks, James. All right, Steve, I've retrieved my rec because that beam is installed. That's good. It's installed. All right, guys, and I am with you on one, so it looks like you guys... NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg have successfully uh, finished rotating the carrier beams out of the way and secured them back down.
This was the last planned task in the this EVA, but they will now move into some get ahead tasks for next week's EVA. Frank, I've got a few uh, incidental block smudges on my glove fingertips. Otherwise, no change and dry hot. Okay, I copy for both of you. And uh, you'll just have to be a little bit patient with me here because we're working now out of a Jedi message. And so I'll just have to be toggling back and forth on the computer. We are now in an approximately five minute loss of signal. We will regain signal shortly after that. During this period, NASA astronaut Frank Rubio aboard the International Space Station is the prime IV for the spacewalking crew. A couple of the get ahead tasks that the crew will be working on include releasing the ARD or anti-rotation device for next week's IROSA, as well as releasing some of the lower R bolts or restraint bolts. While today's spacewalk has focused on installing the IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array on the starboard four truss connected to the 1A power channel on the space station, next week's spacewalk will focus on installing the IROSA to the starboard six truss connected to the 1B power channel. Coverage of next week's spacewalk, which is U.S. Spacewalk 88, is scheduled to begin at approximately 8.20 a.m. Central Time, 9.20 a.m. Eastern Time on June 15th. The spacewalk next week is scheduled to begin at approximately 8.20 a.m. Central Time, 9.20 a.m. Eastern Time, with NASA TV coverage beginning at 6.45 a.m. Central Time, 7.45 a.m. Eastern Time. We are now about four hours and 35 minutes into today's spacewalk. The spacewalk officially began at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 9.25 a.m. Eastern Time, when the spacesuits were switched to battery power. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is serving as EV-1 for today's spacewalk and has the suit with the red stripes. And then NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is serving as EV-2 with the unmarked suit. This is the ninth spacewalk in Steve Bowen's career and the first spacewalk for Woody Hoberg. It is the 264th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades, and the seventh spacewalk out of the space station in 2023.
In this view, you can see uh, today's ground IV, who is Jenny Gibbons in the center of your string, screen. Um, but right now, during the loss of signal, uh, NASA astronaut Frank Rubio aboard the International Space Station is currently serving as the prime IV. This is from crew lock bag. Where's that adjustable? Design fresh out. Okay, uh, checking. All right, so we want one one end defector on one and one one defector on two, correct? Uh, correct. Uh, Steve, you're going to install those end effectors on handrail one and two, and you want to leave the adjustable equipment feathers connected to both mutt end effectors, and then make sure that the mutt end effectors are locked. All right. Steve, do you have extra adjustables over there? I have one. Uh, there should okay. be one. Oh, no, we used it. I've got one in a fair lead that I could go get, but. Yeah, Woody, so this is supposed to have come from your key bar. Uh, obviously, we must have used it somewhere else. Uh, is there one in the bag that you can use? I used one on the um, loop beam. All right, I'll bring you one. Give me a second. Should you go up? Oh, we're going to need it. Uh, let's see. You just need one adjustable to do both. Yeah, copy. Correct. Yeah, Woody, you'll just end up putting that adjustable to a ret, then you'll use the either end of the adjustable to hold both ARDs. All right. I have the other end of vectors locked in place on handrails one and two. Copy, Steve. Houston's back with you. Thanks, Jenny. We're trying to figure out where to get an adjustable for these ARDs. I'll bring it to you. Okay. All right, Jams. Uh, so we are currently, uh, for Steve in block one, he just completed step five. Uh, so he would be going to step six next. And then for Woody, we're in block two, and he's completed step two. And we were going to the ARDs. However, since he was near Charlie 11, he was going to do that one first. We'll copy. Copy. I'll need a minute to catch up. All right, and we copy that Woody needs an additional adjustable, and Steve is bringing it to him. Is that correct? Okay, well, I just turn that around. Affirmative. All right, so, again, Woody will be actually starting on step 12, but after you complete that ARD, you'll have to go back to step 3 for the ARD on Charlie 12. I see you at a bad angle here. Yeah. Copy. Thank you. I could watch you do that all day, I guess. All right, there you go. Thank you. Be really cool. And so, Jenny, if you're ready, then you can uh, have time. All right, you have adjustable. Got it. And I will just confirm with you, Frank, that uh, I have the next step for Steve being releasing R3 and R4, correct? That is correct. Okay. In that case, I have all the information I need. Great job. I am Prime, Prime IV. Okay. Copy. Thanks so much, James. Steve, now that you... need to do a socket swap, I think. Was that Steve or Woody? That's Steve. I think I need to do a socket swap because... Are these five eights? Hey, Firm, you need the... Uh, actually, you need the 7 16 6-inch wobble on your PGT. Yeah. Okay, let me go back and get some. Hey, Firm, you'll be at Krulak Bag T. Isn't that way?
Hey, did you put the uh, pocket caddy on the outside here? What are you for? Oh, no, it's on the inside. Oh, sorry. I okay. went ahead and put it back inside. Woody, was that a question for, or excuse me, Steve, was that a question for Houston? No, it's a question for Woody. Put the socket caddy back inside. That's all. Copy. Yeah, I have Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2 set, or ARD C11 release. Can you confirm that you've attached the free end of the adjustable to the ARD tether point? Yep, I have an adjustable on the ARD tether point. Copy, and that is connected to your mini workstation via a RET on the D, on the adjustable, correct? That is correct, and we had to scavenge that adjustable from Steve. I used my two, one for a fair lead and one for the uh, Boom, tie down. Yep, Houston follows that. I just want to make sure that we're redded, um, but we understand that uh, the adjustable config. In that case, we are go to continue. You have good settings, Bravo 3, counter 2, and you're releasing the stop block bolt 10 turns only. 10 turns only, copy. And Jenny, am I going to be swapping pockets again after this at any point? But the question is if I want to just put this socket in my uh, bag, my trash bag, or if I want to transfer it to the uh, um, Dr. Caddy. Checking. NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg are continuing today's spacewalk. They are four hours and 44 minutes into it. They are now working on some get ahead tasks for next week's spacewalk. The ARD, and then your settings to drive the stop block bolt are Bravo mm -hmm. 1, clockwise 2. Steve, I can confirm you have right now. Woody Hoberg is working to remove the anti-rotation device, or ARD, while uh, NASA astronaut Steve Bowen works to release some restraint bolts. Or your trash bag, it does not matter to us. Uh, let me just go. If I get that at my end, I'll move it over. No problem. Okay. Take it back up and swap, swap that target. Kathy, we got lots of time here. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, set. Good words, and confirm you've removed the ARD. Oh, yeah. Okay, you're go to drive the stop block bolt to torque. Copy. Six 
Steve, you broke up there. I think you said your 716 6 inch wobble is on your PGT with a good pull test. That is what I said. Thank you. Copy. Your next step is to release R3 or R4. Let me know which position you're going to be in, and I'll give you settings. All right, let me get over there. I'll get settled. Against the stop block bolt, torque out at four and a half turns, good green light, 12 decimal one foot pounds. And I can see that the block is resting on the bolt can, not uh, in the further recess position. Copy, that is a good config, Woody. We are ready for you to move to the other ARD. I'll be going over to Alpha. A firm extension Alpha is where we need you. You are now seeing live views outside the space station from NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's helmet camera as he works to release some restraint bolts. The release of these restraint bolts is part of a get-ahead task for next week's spacewalk. There are two sets of bolts on the boom end of the lower irosa. The first two bolts will allow the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place to help with the array deployment in next week's spacewalk. Alpha 3, clockwise 3. Good readback. Hold on. Good alpha. To calibrate again, I just turned off my PGP. All right, Copy. let's try this. For R3, it is clockwise 3. R3, clockwise 3. Well, I must be. I have R3, clockwise 3, alpha 1, 3. Alpha 3, clockwise 3 for R3. Alpha 3, clockwise 3. I'm all set, let me get myself stable. Copy. We have our auto three counter two set for ARD three. Release. And I've got my adjustable on it. Copy. We need Bravo three counter two. Confirm. I, uh, that's what, it, thank you. Bravo, three, counter two, I'm looking at it, it's set. Copy, good settings. Confirm that you have tethered to the uh, ARD, and then you can release that stop block bolt 10 turns. Copy, 10 turns, and adjustable tether is installed. Hold on, Jenny, I gotta get a more comfortable position. I keep swinging here. All right. Give me a moment, I'm gonna get a little bit better position. We understand, Steve. Again, we're doing get-aheads at this point, so lots of time. Ten turns on ARD-3. Copy, 10 turns on the stop block bolts. Here we go.
Steve, understand you're finding a better body position. I wanted to let you know your helmet is close to the IROSA boom end. The reason I want to get in a better body position. Copy. All right. Thank you. Bravo 1, clockwise 2 set for stop block bolt install. Copy. You can drive that stop block bolt to turn or to torque. Those are good settings. Copy. Okay, that should be a lot more comfortable, and hopefully I'm in a much better position. That looks great to us, Steve. Well done. Okay. Steve, before you start this bolt, since it is 245 turns, I'll let you know we're about a minute and a half to sunrise, as you can see. And then I'll be ready for you to start. All right, Alpha 3, clockwise 3, 245 turns for R3, correct? Good words. And I am starting Alpha R3, clockwise 3, now. You are a go. Jam stop clock bolt 10 turns green light 12 decimal 4 foot pounds. Copy. That is a good bolt, Woody. You can stow your PTT. Complete. Woody, you will be translating to the crew lock bag where you will be stowing the ARDs and the adjustable. Okay, I copy. Here it is, an adjustable in tango. Hey, firm. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is currently working to release the first set of bolts on the boom end of the lower IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array. These first two bolts will allow the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place to help with the array deployment for next week's spacewalk. Right now you are seeing views from NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg's helmet camera. He recently completed a get ahead task to release the anti-rotation device on next week's IROSA. Checking for you, Woody. He's now working to stow um, an equipment tether with the anti-rotation devices into the crew lock bag. Go 
Woody, while you're at the crew lock bag, your next step is the socket swap. Let me know when you want more words. Okay, I'll get the 12 inch off. What am I going to? 7 16th, 6 inch. Okay, 17 uh, 6 inch. I'll get that out of my trash bag. I'll get the 12 inch on the uh, socket caddy. Uh, 245 turns. And let me see if I can see the turkey timer. Copy, 245 turns. And let me put my... A firm. I'm going to stop my two for your words. Copy, Steve. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen continues to work on releasing a set of R bolts for next week's spacewalk. Um, you heard them reference a turkey timer, which is basically a status indicator to ensure right. bolts are fully released. In the middle of that circle. Correct, Woody? Do you, uh, um, that's that it, Steve. Yeah. Yep, it's popped up. Yeah. Okay. We can confirm. So R3 is complete. Well done. We can move on to R4. Let me know when you want your different settings. All right. Yeah, let me get comfortable again. Take your time. From this view, you can see both of today's spacewalkers. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is EV-1 in the red stripes, and then NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is EV-2 with the unmarked suit. Jam socket swap complete with full test empty trash bag. Copy, Woody. I will have more words for you shortly. Copy. All right. Ready for Alpha the Romeo 4. Copy, Steve. I have you ready for R4. Your settings are Alpha 3, Counter 3. Alpha 3, Counterclockwise 3 for R4. 245 turns again. You got it. That's in work. I see good car qualifying. Copy.
All right, Woody, thanks for your patience. We are ready. Translate to stanchion alpha. We are going to have you readjust the adjustable tether on the FSE beam that's tempted out there. This is because there is a concern that that beam might um, move toward the top of the IROSA blanket over time with the adjustables in the current position. We want to stop that from happening. So we are going to have you move the adjustable from the stanchion upper, the stanchion handrail upper stanchion to the lower stanchion. Okay, uh, moving the adjustable from upper to lower stanchion, heading over. That's right. Eventually, we will also have to do this at stanchion Bravo, which is on the other side of the POA, but let's just do alpha for now. We're also tracking that we need to remove that FOD. Okay, yep, copy all. All right, so this is down, this would be handrail triple zero one next to width four. Negative, Woody. It's staying on the same handrail on the stanchion, the one that your left hand is on. We just want to see if you can move the hook to the lower stanchion of that same handrail. Oh, I got you. Yeah, no problem. And just to be clear, we have not tightened these adjustables at all yet. Yep, we have not tightened those adjustables at all. We have that step for whoever leaves the FSC last. Normally, that's Steve. Okay, gotcha. That is a stretch. Let's see. Two hundred. Okay, Jim's got it on. Copy. Great job, Woody. And I can probably get over to Bravo and do that as well. Let's do that, Woody. Be mindful that Steve is currently working the All right. R4. All right, that should be 245. And I see the turkey timer has dropped out. Copy, 245 turns on R4, and the turkey timer has popped out. Great job. You can store your PGT. Actually, correction, Steve, you can probably leave your PGT out. Our next steps are for R1 and R2. Okay, I'm going to find a good position to get up there, so it's going to take a bit. Copy, you take your time. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen just finished releasing the first set of bolts um, in his get-ahead task on the boom end of the lower IROSA. These bolts um, allow the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place to help with array deployment for next week's spacewalk. Now he'll move on to a second set of bolts, which will release two of four mechanisms that hold the IROSA in its rolled-up configuration. Woody, for your awareness, if you have trouble with this reach, so if the adjustable is not long enough, one, leaving this on the upper stanchion is acceptable since the other one is on the lower stanchion. Okay, that's great to know. Thanks, James. See if I can get it there. Success. Great work, Woody. You can translate back to the crew lock bag. We'll be retrieving the needle nose pliers. Okay. 
Actually, Woody, prior to your translation, we are going to have you cinch down the adjustable bits in front of you. Okay. Okay, that feels pretty tight. And we agree, we got a good view of it in your HECA. Thank you. Great. Woody, again, you can translate back in the direction of the crew lock bag. On your way, we will have you cinch the other adjustable tether that's temp sewing the beam. Perfect, I copy that. Okay, I'm not sure there's a good way to get the R1 or R2 from here. Uh, might be pipe crawling on the end of the arrays here. There's no good place to hold on to, right? Copy, Steve. We think that the best position for you here would be actually holding on to the MUT end effector. We agree you will not be able to reach unless you are actually on the boom end of IROSA and the FSC. All right, let me try and see if I can find a good MUT end effector position. Copy. And Steve, we know it's tight around here. We're getting words to remind you not to contact the magnets and the blanket. Okay, Jenny. Alpha adjustable is cinched, and I can confirm the beam appears well clear of IROSA. Great work. We're really happy to hear that. You can translate back to the crew lock bag, and we'll have you retrieve the needle nose pliers. Copy. Okay, question is uh, what are my turns on R1 and R2? They won't lose. Your settings will be alpha, so you'll be alpha four, counter two for both of those bolts, and it'll be 10 to 13 turns. Okay, I might be able to do that. I get stable and make sure I can reach. Copy. Okay, Jenny, you got the needle noses. Happy Woody, stand by one. Yeah, take your Alpha three or alpha four? Alpha four. And counterclockwise? It's alpha four, counter two. And just a reminder, caution here, you'll have to rotate these boom deployment system rollers slowly once you release those bolts. Well, that's a whole other issue to be able to reach up there to get to those. We understand. Because they're on top, and I am not. All right. If it's helpful at this time, Woody, we could have you translate to Steve to try and provide some extra stability for this work site. Yep, that in there. That would be helpful.
Actually, if you have those meeting those, why don't you take the uh, the debris off right now, and then we'll deal with me. Okay, got you. Can you see it? It's right there. I'm going to get out of your way a little bit. And ground's fine with that yeah, option. I'll drop the RT just for a little. Woody, while you're getting your BRT down, I can give you both big picture words. Are you ready? All right, we are around five hours and 15 minutes into this EVA, tracking a time of seven hours and 30 minutes with the limiting consumable still being Woody's battery. We have no more than one hour of content left and that includes our worksite cleanup and translating back. So that means we're going to try and get R1 and R2 complete. And also, like you guys are tracking, we will retrieve that FOD. All right, Jenny, that sounds great. For speed awareness, I think I'm in a, I think I should be able to hit the uh, PDF on this side. That's helpful. Okay, that'll work. I'm ready for it. Hey, do you have the, uh, do you have the, uh, do you have I'm just getting in a good spot here okay. to get the FOD. I think I can get R2, but I can't deploy it from here. If we're ready, Jenny, I'll do R2. Hey, Firm, you can start with R2. Okay, wait, I'm swinging. Never mind. I'll wait. You want to do? I'm in a good spot for the FOD. Should we do that? Yeah, just do the FOD to start. Okay. Um, Ground's ready. Okay, so Jenny, just to talk through it, so the plan is to grab this with the needle nose, then attempt to stick the needle nose into the trash bag and release it in there and hope it stays. Hey, Firm Woody. Okay, great. Thanks. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg um, is working on another get-ahead task to retrieve some FOD or foreign object debris. He will be using those needle nose pliers that you see in his hand um, in the top left hand side of the screen to remove the FOD, which is located near a magnet um, nearby next week's IROSA. He will then stow it in a trash bag, and then NASA astronaut Steve Bowen will continue to work on releasing the R bolts uh, on next week's uh, IROSA. That is a powerful magnet. <laughs> All right, we got it. I'm holding it up in the HECA just in case that's helpful. It's like a uh, cylinder with a smaller diameter. We copy, Woody. We need that in your trash bag. Oh, yeah, it's going there. <laughs> it is, I'm looking into the trash bag. The needle nose are in the trash bag. It is in the trash bag, but it's stuck to the needle nose. So I don't want to necessarily pull them out. Okay, I think I got it to liberate into the trash bag. All right, it's in the trash bag, Jams. Excellent. Copy, great work, you too. Steve, let me just get kind of configured here, and then I can help. Yep. I just need a little bit of stability in my leg, then it should be okay. I'm probably trying to swing around the other way, but I'm and Houston, kind of constrained right now. Houston concurs. Okay, so you need you need to stop. So let me get up here real quick. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. Yes, I need to get a little higher. How do you feel about me taking your PGT and seeing if I can hit R1? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Don't get a chance to move back to where I started. Okay, settings, alpha, 
Four, counter two. Good settings. Release our one, 10 to 13 turns. All right, looks like it popped out at 11, Jams. Copy, R1. Is he coming back? Popped out at 11 turns. I mean, I have the PTT. You've got the PTT. I can probably, I don't know if it helps for me to come around to that side and try to do the same thing. If you want me to try to just give you stability. If just give me some stability, that might be like helpful. Let me, uh, let me see. see what I can do here. Oh, they keep swinging under. Okay, let me grab your, uh, okay, I've got your BRT. Perfect. Gotcha. All right, can I go a little bit higher? Wait, try. Touch the uh, blanket on the right side. Yeah. All right, so. Oh, no, every time I go up, I come down. Get up high enough. There you go. Got you. Uh, maybe. Unfortunately, when you push on it, it's pushing you down. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is working to release the second of two bolts. Um, this will release two of four mechanisms that hold the IROSA or International Space Station roll up, roll out solar array in its rolled up configuration. I'm just swing myself around here so I can basically steal my PGT without hitting the blanket boxes. Okay. Houston copies R2 is released. We appreciate you being wary of those blankets. All right, that's our 11 turn. They'll now work to rotate the boom deployment system rollers. And then after that, they will work on some work site cleanup. Woody, we follow. You can do that. From this view, you can see both of today's spacewalkers. In the unmarked suit is NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who is EB2, and with the red stripes on his spacesuit is NASA astronaut Steve Bowen, who is EV1. Okay, left side BDS is rolled. 90 degrees. Okay. Copy, Woody. I just pull it out slowly, right? I just slowly roll. Great. To get to like 15 seconds for the full motion. And we broke up a little bit there. Steve, can you confirm whether that's deployed or not, or is that still in work? One work. Copy. Woody, your next steps will be to translate off of the FSE. You can tuck the needle nose pliers in your mini workstation. You'll need to translate back down the POA, pick up your fair lead, and then the crew lock bag. All right, so how does that look, Danny? I think I've got more than 90. Can you bring it back up a little bit? And Steve?
Steve, we need full rotation. We don't have video at this time. So what does full rotation mean? The rollers need to contact the blanket in the deployed position. Okay, they are now in contact. I understand. Thank you. Not a problem. Woody, did you copy my next steps for you? Hey, firm. Uh, you'll notice talking to the workstation pick up that um... As well as your fair lead, May firm. Copy. And Jenny, uh, what is on, on top for me next? Steve, you are going to translate to crew lock bag T, where you're going to clean up that crew lock bag. We are still tracking that the socket caddy is outside, so we need that tucked back in and then cleaned up such that the doors are facing the tower. All right, is there any reason to leave that bag out here? A firm, you are leaving crew lock bag because out there. And, and for the next EDA, why are we leaving it out here? That's my question. We've uh, stowed, I think, everything we're going to stow in T, isn't it? Steve, give us a, check, a second to check on that. We're about 30 yeah. seconds for a handover. I understand. I'll get configured, and then we can, if you want to leave it out, or bring it in. That sounds good. I'll be back with you in uh, 20 seconds or so. Steve, I'm right here, so I'm just stuffing the stuff in the bag. Yeah, please, thanks. Yeah. Can you think of a reason to leave it out? Unfortunately, the um, ARD loops are hard to keep inside. Yeah, they just dance. Is there anything in the bag? It's pretty close. <laughs> yeah. See what they're saying. Houston's back with you. I'm actually having a hard time getting it to stay. All right, Jenny, what do you think? I just came back with you. What's your question? Oh, same question I had when we left. But through up back T, uh, we're going to leave it out here. Uh, I'm trying to make sure it stays facing the FSC, and that's kind of hard to do. Uh, can I use the wire tie to do that if we're going to leave it? A firm, Steve, we've confirmed you will need to leave it there because we need a socket for the C bolt release on EVA2, but you can uh, use a wire tie to help you stow it. As long as the tethers are still attached, that's fine. Oh, yeah, no, I'm leaving the tethers, but they just don't cinch up tight enough to hold it in space. That's totally fine. Early retreat. Copy, Woody. Woody, next step for you. All right, everything's stowed inside. Copy, Steve. I've got a wire tie holding it in place. 
first. That sounds good. Woody, for you, you will be following your tether back to your green hook. You'll be retrieving that as well as crew lock bag M. Stow that on your VRT. Copy all. Woody, an additional reminder of you to stay clear of that test cable just in front of the crew lock bag. Yep, got it in sight, and thanks so much for the reminder. Okay, we are just under five and a half hours into today's spacewalk, which began at approximately 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 9.25 a.m. Eastern Time, when NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg turned their spacesuits to battery power. The duo then egressed the crew lock, um, where Steve Bowen received a crew lock bag, and Woody Hoberg then uh, retrieved his articulating portable foot restraint. From there, they worked to release some anti-rotation devices on the upper IROSA or International Rollout Solar Array, as well as a couple of sets of bolts on the boom end of the upper IROSA. You are go to get off of the FSE via the POA, and we will have you translate back to the airlock leading. They then worked to remove the IROSA from its carrier and installed a scoop so that uh, NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg could lift the IROSA from the carrier. And then after several maneuvers on the robotic arm, Woody Hoberg arrived at the 1A mod kit work site where NASA astronaut Steve Bowen met him. They then worked to install the IROSA onto the 1A mounting bracket. And then they unfolded the IROSA and secured the right side onto the mounting bracket. Shortly after, they electrically connected the new IROSA to the space station's power system. After releasing the final two bolts holding the IROSA in an undeployed position, the International Space Station Rollout Solar Array deployed over the next approximately 10 minutes. I see him, uh, well. The team then moved to work on reconfiguring the carrier beams that previously held the upright IROSA. Those beams needed to be rotated out of the way to allow access to the lower IROSA, which will be deployed on next week's spacewalk on June 15th. Hoberg and Bowen remained about an hour ahead on their tasks today, so they were able to complete several get-ahead tasks. Okay. I'm currently on my anchor. The first of those tasks was to release the anti-rotation device for next week's IROSA install, along with some R bolts on the boom end of the IROSA for next week, and they also retrieved some FOD or foreign object debris. They're now working to clean up their work site, and then soon we will see them ingress the space station to complete this week's spacewalk. Confirmed. This is just a poor man's fair lead. I'll let you know if it's a rich man's. Okay. You want to at the very top, or do you want to like halfway down?
it's already paying all down here. So will you go start that looking? All right, my still up there? Uh, yeah. Okay. I might move it. I think okay. I see a better spot for it, if you don't mind. Oh, please. Thank okay. you. Yep. Okay, yep, Steve, looking good. Thank you. Jenny, am I fair leading as well? Yes, Woody, but stand by. We are getting word that we might have to go back to get a double tap on the port inboard most port Cedar cart brake release. Oh, that's no problem. I'll go do it. Can you confirm with us whether you did it once or twice? We just didn't see. I got it. Honestly, I can't recall. I uh, I know it depressed fully, but it is possible that I only tapped it once. Okay, we didn't see it. We just want to be super safe, so uh, let's go back and do that since we got plenty of time here. Thanks. Yeah, no, no problem at all. On en route. Okay, Jane, do you want me on the outside of the airlock, I think? Or the front side? Happy Steve, your next step is to open the hatch thermal cover and then we're going to be waiting for Woody to get back. Understood. And Woody, you just need to double tap whichever brake is going to be closest to you. Okay, I see it. One, two. Four side seat of car, tap. Great work, we saw it. You can translate back inboard, and you will now be placing a fair lead at the top of the CETA spur. Copy, Jenny. Thanks. Steve, we would like you to cycle your IRCA, please. Yes. Okay, I got a quick question first. Go. Um, get my. Uh, do you want me on the front side or the back side of the? That's my up the airlock. I think I need to be on the front side looking where my tether's bending so we can get by. Does that make sense? Steve, we'll have you on the aft side. That's what we have as a good position. What did you say you needed to deconflict yourself with Woody? I'm just looking at the, the way my tether is. I go to the aft side. It crosses in front of the airlock, if I'm here, you can pass between me and go to the aft side. It's just harder. I can go there. If you want me to go to the aft side? Uh, I've got a good green light. I think I hit it. Copy about the IRCA, and we're still talking the tethers. Thanks for letting us know. Okay. Hello, what do you think? Um, Steve, I just passed under your tether. I'm over on the cedar spur. Well, yeah, that's clear. fine. Um, I think you're clear to go aft. Sure. Yeah. My tether's on the left, right? My tether's on the left. I've got yeah. eyes on it. Um, I can see it too. Starting where I want to do my spin move. I don't think you have to do much of a spin move. Yeah, okay. I agree. Just come on down and get on the handrail, the circular handrail, and then you can rotate around on that. Yep. There you go. That'll work. 
And Houston copies you both back at the airlock. Great work. Regarding the tethers, you guys have the best eyes on what's going on. We're just going to need a report of the config once uh, we're ready to come inside. All right, sounds great, James. NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg are translating back to the airlock. They were working on cleaning up their tethers before they ingress. I'm going to the bag. I'm going to go ahead and good idea. my waist tether. Very good idea. All right, James, my right waist tether is gate closed, lock, lock on black to the airlock B-ring extender. All right, I copy that good load pass, Woody. Uh, I'll get you to turn off your HECA and ingress the airlock. You can see on the left side of your screen that the thermal cover has been opened, and now NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is working to ingress or enter the airlock. Woody, give Steve a go when he's ready for your tether action. Steve, I have steps for you if you want me to talk you through it. Yeah, I will need you to talk me through it. Let me get make sure Woody's safe inside. And yeah, Steve, I'm safe. Uh, the only connection I have is my, well, other than my current safety tether, um, is my weight tether to the dealer ring extender. I understand. That sounds good. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Any emergency coffee? Steve, lock Woody's green reel. Lock Woody's green reel. Okay. It's locked. Stow his green hook on the aft airlock external D-ring. Uh, green hook going to aft. Good words. And locked. Real is still locked, so stay unlocked. Copy. I copy the green hook is on the aft airlock D ring. The gate is closed and the hook is locked. You can stow Woody's yellow hook on your waist tether. That will be your new load path. You need to make sure that hook is locked black on black. Let me get that on my waist cover.
I have my waist feather get close slider lock. Their Woody's yellow hook get close slider lock. Pick up it's been a good config. We agree that's a good config and your new load pass. Lock your green reel and stow your green hook on the forward airlock external D-ring. All right, let me get my green reel. That's locked. Copy real locked. Green hook, very close slider lock. I'll now unlock that reel. Copy. That's a good config for your hook. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg has fully ingressed the crew lock. Um, and now we see Steve Bowen finishing up some last steps as he works to make his way inside. Those green reels unlocked. You are now go to. Stow your yellow hook on your mini workstation. Yellow hook going to my mini workstation is complete. All right. That is a good config. Steve, you can ingress the airlock. All right. I will ingress the airlock. And Woody, I'm up on the forward edge. There. Woody, we need you, we need you to power off your HECA. When you powered it off, you powered it on. Ah, that's fun. I believe it is off now. I pressed the button once. All right, let me get my HECA. Copy. Wait till I get my legs inside. You can now see NASA astronaut Steve Bowen making his way inside. Once inside, they'll close the hatch thermal cover and the process to repressurize will begin. What's behind me? Um, that feels like maybe we got a. I think you're in my. There you go. No. I'm looking for, I think there's something around maybe the back of my leg speed. Is that possible? It is possible. No, actually disregard. That is not, that is not the problem. Let's see. Try again. Okay, that's your place on on my legs. Hang on, let me try to get away. That's much better. Okay. Let me see if I can get the... Over.
NASA astronaut Steve Bowen has now ingressed the crew lock and closed the hatch thermal cover. I copy that you have the magnetic plate D-ring. You'll need to attach the hook to that, cinch the strap till snug, and report the number of Sharpie lines visible. That's what we were expecting. Verify the magnet is engaged. Well done. Now for both of you, you can remove the SCUs from their stowage pouches, remove your DCM covers and Velcro them to your DCMs, and connect your SCU. SCU installed and locked for a Woody and a TCV of eight. Right now you are seeing live views inside of the equipment lock where NASA astronaut Frank Rubio and UAE or United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Niyadi are awaiting um, the repressurization of the crew lock before they can open the hatch and re greet their um, fellow astronauts after a successful spacewalk. Copy, EV-1, SCU is attached and locked. Both EV crew members switch water off, OFF, 
expect H2 is off message. CP1, water's off. CP2, water's off. Copy, both water's off. Caution, do not close the hatch until EMU water is off for two minutes. We started the timer. Well, I have you both here for two minutes. I want to say congratulations to the team on an exceptional EVA. You guys were fantastic today. Congratulations to Woody on your first spacewalk and to Steve on your ninth. Finally, congratulations to all of Crew 6 on your 100th day on orbit. It's been a doozy. Thank you very much, Jenny. Greatly appreciate that. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I think it's been an amazing, amazing support from the ground. Uh, a great plan. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. Uh, quite, quite startling. Uh, although that's what he does every day. And uh, Woody, do you have anything you want to add? Thanks, Steve, and thanks, Jan. The team did an amazing job planning uh, this EVA and also executing it, and I uh, couldn't be happier to get to work with this team and also to get to do my first uh, EVA with such a fantastic leader as Steve. I just could not imagine uh, a better um, experience to have for my first EVA, so thank you so much. Great. Well, we're happy for you both, and we have 30 seconds left on our timer. I'll let you know when you can close the hatch. You just heard um, some kind words and congratulations from the ground IV here in the room, Jenny Gibbons on a successful spacewalk for NASA astronaut Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg. It was the first spacewalk for Woody Hoberg and the ninth spacewalk for Steve Bowen. We're now standing by for repressurization. So with that, you can verify the outer hatch is clear of hardware and the handle position is per the hatch decal and close and lock the hatch. Uh, that's complete, and I'm going to try and close this the first time. <clears throat> Trying to stay out of your way, Steve. <laughs> I need to come a little bit aft. Yeah, I agree. Any chance you can pull me a little bit? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. What you just did was <clears throat> trying to pull you. Yeah, yeah. You're hitting me in part. There you go. Nice job. Watch each other. Yeah, I see it. Okay. All right. Looks clear. Ready to latch. Okay. Stand by. All right, it is watched. It is watched. Copy, the hatch is closed and locked. Woody and Steve, for your awareness, we are going to be headed into an LOS where we will have SHA-SS 
So I will say prime IV before handing off to Frank. On the UIA, check oxygen EMU 1 and 2. Both valves are open. Oxygen EMU 1 and 2 valves both open. Switch power EV1 and 2 both on. Power EV1 and 2 both on. Two LEDs. Bolts are 18 decimal 6 times 2. Copy, LEDs are on and 18 decimal 6 for voltage EV1 and EV2. On your DCMs, switch power to SCU. Expect a warning tone. EV1 is SCU. EV2 is SCU. Copy. With that, I will hand you back to your very capable suit IVs. Frank, the comm is yours. Hey, Jenny, fantastic job, as always, by you, Nick, and the entire ground team. Thanks so much. We look forward to hanging out with you guys again next week. Thanks, Frank. Us, too. All right, Stephen Woody, uh, next we'll be working through who our repos, which should be a 10 minute uh, warning. If, uh, disregard. So, both of you, go to actuator to press. Verify that you see, go to actuator to press display. All right, let me take a minute here and get that done. Then press. If you want to still working on it, I see RC position press. I put my finger on there for some reason. Copy, Steve, and also could you verify that you see O2 actuator in press? Just uh, O2 actuator is in press. Not to set, set, set by. I'm up there. <laughs> NASA astronaut Frank Rubio inside the equipment lock is currently walking through some repressurization procedures with our spacewalkers from today who are on the other side of that hatch in the crew lock. Pause. Is this the front? Copy, that's a good thing. So it's both. Uh, Steve, check that the EV hatch FM is closed. It is closed. And I'll be throttling the IV hatch equalization valve from off to norm, and just let me know if it's a good rate for you guys. The repressurization of the crew lock has officially begun. We are currently at about 5.5 pounds per square inch in climbing. 
just uh, expect an alert tone, and then you can also expect an alert tone at four decimal zero. Copy. 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 You guys both okay with that, right? I'm good with it. DD2 is good. With the repressurization underway, it marks the official end of the spacewalk at 2.28 p.m. Central Time, 2.20, I mean 3.28 p.m. Eastern Time, for a total spacewalking time of 6 hours and 3 minutes. The spacewalk began at 6.25 a.m. Central Time and 9.25 a.m. Eastern Time. Okay, guys, we're at 5 PSI. We're going to let the pressure stabilize for two minutes and then do a leak check. Sounds good. Sounds good. The crew lock is now at a pressure of approximately 5 pounds per square inch. They'll hold here for a couple of minutes and then do some leak checks before continuing to increase the pressure.
with today's spacewalk coming to an end and totaling six hours and three minutes. Uh, we have some statistics for you. This is the 264th spacewalk for the International Space Station in support of assembly maintenance and upgrades. It's the seventh spacewalk out of the space station this year and the fifth spacewalk during Expedition 69. This was the ninth spacewalk of NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. Um, he has now garnered 60 hours and 22 minutes of space talk, space walking time, which puts him fifth in the all-time list for the most spacewalking time. It was the first spacewalk for Woody Bowen, so he now has six hours and three minutes of spacewalking time. In today's spacewalk, which began at 8.25 a.m. Central Time, 9.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and ended at 2.28 p.m. Central Time, 3.28 p.m. Eastern Time. It lasted a total of six hours and three minutes as they installed um, a new International Space Station Rollout Solar Array, or IROSA, um, on the 1A power channel on the starboard truss of the space station. In total, the space station has um, seen over 69 days of spacewalking time with 69 days, 21 hours, and 52 minutes of spacewalking time across those 264 spacewalks that have been conducted. We are currently in a brief loss of signal as we transition between satellites. There's about three minutes left in that, and then we will return to views inside the equipment lock as the crew lock continues to be repressurized. Once the repress process is complete, we will see NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg make their way into the equipment lock. From there, uh, we will continue coverage until we see their helmets come off, and then we will wrap our coverage until next week when we have another IROSA installation spacewalk on June 15th.
During that uh, loss of signal, the repressurization of the crew lock was completed, and now you can see NASA astronaut Frank Rubio toward the bottom of your screen assisting our spacewalkers from today, who are NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg, back into the equipment lock. Houston on one, crew is no longer hot mic. First into the equipment lock, you can see NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. He served as EV2 today, so he had the unmarked suit. Right now you can see UAE astronaut in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen removing the safer or simplified aid for EVA rescue from Hoberg's suit. NASA astronaut Frank Rubio is now assisting Steve Bowen through the hatch into the equipment lock, and then he will have his safer removed as well, which is the simplified aid for EVA rescue.
NASA astronaut Frank Rubio and UAE or United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Niyadi are beginning to assist with doffing the spacesuits. Right now they're removing some of the tools that were used on today's spacewalk and getting those out of the way. You can see UAE astronaut Sultan Al Niyadi removing the HECA or HD EMU camera assembly from the spacesuit. Al Niyadi and Rubio are now working to remove the gloves from Hoburg and Bowen. Shortly after that, they will then start to remove the helmets, 
Once the helmets are off, we will then wrap our coverage for today. They are now working to remove the helmets from today's spacewalkers who are NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg. With the helmets off and our spacewalkers safely inside the International Space Station, we're going to wrap today's coverage. As a recap, um, NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg successfully installed an IROSA, or International Space Station, rollout solar array to augment power generation for the 1A power channel on the station's starboard truss structure. They also were able to complete several get-ahead tasks to set them up for a successful spacewalk next week. Coverage of U.S. Spacewalk 88 to install the next ISS rollout solar array on the starboard truss of the International Space Station is scheduled to begin at approximately 8.20 a.m. Central Time, 9.20 a.m. Eastern Time, with NASA TV coverage beginning live at 6.45 a.m. Central Time, 7.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and we will see the same two spacewalkers venture out of the space station again. With that, this is Mission Control Houston.